Meeting to order at 7.04. First item on the agenda is, is reserved for changes to the agenda items and order. We all set there? Yes. No changes. Comments and questions from the public not related to the agenda. We're all set there. All right. So here we go. Continue consideration of amendments to the Colchester Development Regulation Supplement 44. And we'll let Kathy start right off with A. So most of the agenda is in order of its appearance in the regulations, except for the lakeshore changes. That way, if anyone were to come just for that item, they wouldn't have to stay through the rest if they don't want to. So just respecting um, the interest we've seen. Um, bear with me. The mouse is without a battery. Hello. Uh, no way. We are nowhere yet. Starting on A. through quite a bit of this last time. We did flag a few things specifically to return to. Um, I'll start with the green infrastructure requirements. We were gonna talk about those. If you recall, a lot of those were copied over from LS1 and LS2. They don't exist anywhere else in the regulations except for the Lakeshore districts. So where they exist in LS1 and LS2, they are written in such a way that if you were to meet the standard that's outlined, you could increase your coverage on the lot. For LS1 and LS2, you could increase that indefinitely. Conversation as a reminder that the commission had last time was, is it appropriate to keep the same language to increase it indefinitely? I think there was uh, agreement across the board that up to 100% was not the right number. You guys were going to give it some thought as to is there a number at all or do we just require this and there is no increase. So your options in considering this are to not have a green infrastructure requirement, to have one but have no bonus attached to it, or to have one and have some level of bonus between what is allowed for coverage, which is about 40% up to some number of your choosing up to 100%. I put this one solidly in the bucket of <laughs> policy um, that I don't have a strong professional recommendation on. A lot of the lots that are currently used are pretty much as much coverage as you would think anybody would want. There's limited parking, there's it's kind of tough even I mean in this especially in this district it's very interesting but I don't think you can really increase much lot coverage there's no green there's n or the opportunities yep. that are far and few in between yep maybe to stick with the footprint you have and be happy that yeah what do you think Sarita okay. um I just I'm just a little confused about this, so I just, just need some clarification. So I was looking at, um, you know, the uses, you know, the uh, in uh, Article 1 or Article 10, and I was thinking on LS4, uh, the general categories, I was looking at that, and how that might apply, like what would be allowed in LS4 would determine to me kind of lot coverage. Like, 
and maybe I'm way off here, so just correct me if I'm wrong, but like it said, uh, roadside stands for sale of produce grown on the premises. That was not, you, you couldn't do that. But I'm thinking on LS4, mm -hmm. you know, those lots have big land, you know, a lot of land on them, and if someone wanted to do that, if it was conditional or something, then I don't know if that would have anything to do with the lot coverage or limiting it or expanding it. Um, that's a fair question. I think something to keep in mind is that if you do increase coverage based on a use, that's atypical. That's not very common in how most towns would do it. Um, the other thing I would caution you about is that if you tie it to use, it is very difficult to go backwards. So if you were to say this particular use could have 80% coverage and that use cease to exist or become something else, once people have gotten used to that parking or they've put a building there, it's very, I'm not sure you could even legally require them to tear down that building if there was a change in use mm -hmm. that you would have associated with something with less lot coverage. So I, I think it would be really challenging to tie coverage to use. Okay, so let, let's just say someone wanted to open up a little farm stand and grow. I mean, some of those lots look like they could grow yep. some vegetables or flowers or something, and they wanted to have a stand and they could have a way of you know coming in and parking and everything like that. Would this limit their ability to do that if we decided it could be a conditional use? If you had a lot that was large enough to do all of that, um, my guess is you're, you're not running into coverage issues with the 40% that was allowed. If you had enough space to do that sort of agricultural operation, your parking is going to be under that 40%. For that particular example, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it would limit that if that was okay. a chosen Just on use. the LS4 side, Yeah. I feel like... You know, there's, there's a lot of land there uh, if someone wanted to do that. Yeah. So. And there are certainly, when you're talking about agriculture, uh, quite a few state exemptions and additional permissions um, that exist beyond any other use. Mm -hmm. So there's some protections in statute, state statute. So then would we decide, I'm sorry to take up time, just like trying to think this through. So when we look at general categories, if it was not allowed, could we make it conditional, a conditional use for this roadside stand for the sale of produce grown on the premises? Yeah, would it be okay if we talked about the whole table together? Yeah. If we're not tying yep. it to yep. I didn't the know green infrastructure? To... Okay. Yeah. No, I'm happy to talk through it. Um, okay. I don't think we spent much time on it last time, so. Okay. Great. I Thank was you. planning on Absolutely. walking through that one because I don't think we have yet. Yep. Okay. We're yeah. getting there. Thank you, Rebecca. We're just talking about green infrastructure for both LF plus three and four. I kind of agree that three that doesn't really apply. Mm -hmm. so it could apply to some of them in four. It's in the larger lots. I think what we need to do is envision what those increases, what the potential is, and see if that meets our goals and missions for creating these two different zones. See if it's kind of outside our vision for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right now I don't have that answer. I don't know how we'd go about doing that. I mean, you'd look at a typical residential lot and see what that would mean, and then take a look at one of the larger lots. Yeah, and see my what guess that is that, that that's what the 40% as of right reflects. So you already have the 40% coverage in there, and it's a question of whether or not you would get a bonus on top of that if you do certain. Um, of, you know, I say, especially if you're looking at Lakeside, I would wager. Um, that a strong majority of those properties are well over 40 already. Um, probably as high as 80 or 90 percent of them are well over 40 uh, on the lakeside. Um, 
So I think at least on LS3 or the Lakeside, I don't know that any bonus you give is really, unless you were talking something closer to 100%, it's either give no bonus or give 100, I think, at that point. Any other number is probably unrealistic. Yeah. For yeah. three. For three. For four, there's, there's, I think, a lot more room to carve something out if you wish. You did consider last time maybe having no bonus and just requiring it to happen anyway. Um, but there is a lot of space between 40% and, and 100. <laughs> I don't know what the right number would be. The properties are also different. There's a lot of variety. Yeah. On the on the non lake side, between some very large properties that don't have much on them already, to properties that sort of resemble the ones across the street, as far as, and there's also quite a few shared lots. Um, I don't know that if I, even if I found an average, it would tell you much. On some of these larger lots, I don't know what the acreage is. The minimum mm -hmm. sites are out ten. I don't know. If they're that large, or they're even larger. I think that, that large one that has the, the the condominium units is over ten acres okay. or close. So let's take that. If that one was forty percent, you know, up to the forty percent is allowed, mm. what would that look like? Quite a bit. Quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. You also kind of have to look at the topography of that side of. There's a lot of rock bed underneath it's for testing and where the water's going to go once it comes down rain water runoffs and the rest of it i think kind of interesting of how much you want to allow to be built on that side period yeah. Plus and what you what want it to look like down the road yeah 40 percent is pretty much in line with what i have consistently seen in a lot of um mid-size suburban developments um, you know when you're talking about your two to three units per acre type development 40 percent is pretty common it allows people to usually have a home and a few structures and a reasonable driveway and we don't see people hit hit that coverage on most lots uh, where we do have that restriction in, so if somebody comes in and wants to put in a swimming pool or anything, um, it's pretty uncommon for someone to run into a coverage issue unless they're on a very small lot. And that's at 40%. Okay, and so I don't know if you can answer this, but when Sarah did the analysis on, this was going to look back to the sewer, um, what the build out would be for East Lake Shore Drive. Mm -hmm. Was she basing it on the full 40% coverage? Not even, not even beyond it, but at the 40%? They did it entirely on density in bedrooms and not oh. lot coverage. Okay. Um, and so we have been very careful as we've worked through this to make sure there's not a single extra bedroom or, or unit that would be allowed beyond what went into that consideration. Okay. So this over 40% would not increase number of bedrooms which is related back to the yeah okay. yeah i think realistically you just be Sorry. looking at Absolutely. either more accessory structures a little bit more <clears throat> driveway or even just bigger homes with bigger bedrooms but still the same number same number of units just just probably larger yeah so what would be your uh thought about what would the worst case scenario be in terms of you know a, a, a landowner coming in and and really kind of exploiting that, yeah, I think forty again forty percent is a number that we use in a lot of districts across the town, and it is very rare for someone to come in and say I want to do X Y Z, I want to put in a patio, I want to put on a deck, I want to put on a small expansion or a new garage, and for us to tell them no, you're over your lot coverage. It's very rare. And the times that we do that is usually on the very small lots, if you're talking about lease lots or um, mobile home parks or um, some of the lakeshore lots that are, you really have to be well under a quarter acre lot to come into a coverage issue generally, unless you're really just doing a lot. 
a lot of stuff. So 40% is, I would say, more generous than it might sound, more, more flexible than it might sound. And forty percent, it doesn't sound like we're handcuffing anybody, or except for those really small lots. And I and I'm not trying to pretend they don't exist because they do. They do exist here. Um, you know, if you wanted, I could I could look into the number of privately owned small lots that exist. That's probably your best data point. Um, Probably most of those smaller lots already have more than their forty percent and grandfathered in. It's kind That's of that's true. I don't yeah, think there's, there's a lot going that to are... be some give and take. I mean, forty percent is a reasonable number, I think, by the sounds of it. And we don't mind the idea, especially since we know we're not growing bedrooms. We're getting a nicer piece of equipment on our property, whatever that is. Yeah. I personally, I'm not against that. Yeah. I, I thought we were just talking about uh, LS four. Yeah. I mean, we're also talking I think about we are, right? Yeah, we're on okay. LS4. We're only talking about I think what I've heard... Yeah, because LS3, it, we... Is okay. it safe They're, to say LS3, no, 40, whatever the cap is, leave yeah. it? Yeah. Okay, done. I think that's what I've heard. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. If they have 40% or... That's it, yeah. That, right? Yeah, I agree. They probably need the rest of the property to... Yeah. <laughs> park Walk the car. in. Yeah, but parking the car is part of it. <laughs> yeah. So then the question is... If you do this green infrastructure, which to be fair is not required anywhere else, including on other lakeshore properties. So if you're talking about Clay Point, Red Rocks, uh, Porter's Point, Mills Point, there's no requirement for those towns or those neighborhoods, those zones to do this. So right. they are restricted by uh, septic. So we're talking about now sewer. So we're in two different worlds. Well, yeah, we're well, really what you're talking about is stormwater, right? So when you talk yep. about coverage, so uh, what this is trying to do is have less runoff into the lake. Sure. And you've got um, more opportunity if you have a septic tank sitting in your yard. Yeah. That helps so, out. So I think we're good. So there could be, you know, this is an extra requirement that doesn't exist on other lake-adjacent properties. Um, so you could be very well justified if you want to give them some extra bonus if they meet this, but. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so is this just a recommendation from the Regional Planning Commission, this green plan that they're suggesting? I mean, there are stormwater regulations, I think. Yeah, so they've got this tool, this League of Cities and Town has the right. tool. I don't know the genesis of including it in LS1 and LS2. I've put it here because somebody liked it well enough to put it on East Lake Shore or West Lake Shore. So I've included it here for you to talk about. I don't know the genesis of why why it was chosen. Um, I understand it's a it's a very good tool. Mm -hmm. um, it well, it's definitely a bonus can, for the land, bonus for the lake. Yeah. Correct. Well, it's, it's all good stuff. And if you can jump through all those hoops and you can want to build a little bit nicer, bigger, better. I'm not against that. And right. anything, just to yeah. just to give you some insight too, anything that impacts more than 10,000 square feet of land disturbance is going to need a local state storm or a local stormwater permit anyway. Okay, that's what I was. Thinking. And then I don't yeah. remember the threshold for the state. I think it just changed. Oh, for Rebecca, you know. Oh, I don't yeah, it might be a quarter acre. I don't know, but there's a state threshold as well. Um, so any of these big projects, if you're thinking this this. Um, 10 acre lot, for example, if they hit 10,000 square feet of land disturbance, they're getting their own stormwater permits regardless. Okay, good. That, I yeah. just needed that information. Thank you. Answer that question? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm hearing leave the green infrastructure requirement, yeah. no bonus. Same for LS3 and 4. Yeah. Does that represent? I think so. Yeah. 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 So I'll shake our heads. So okay. far. Yep. Um, thank you. So um, I'm not going to edit as we go. I'll just trust that I'll do it <laughs> and I'll show it to you next time. Um, the other thing going through that we talked about was whether or not there was a, a desire to include any sort of aesthetic 
or design standards associated with LS3 or LS4. This was something I think you guys wanted to go back and think about. We did make some changes. Yeah. So this is the draft that was edited last meeting. Um, I've not edited that section since that meeting. Okay, so we're gonna have a question. You have a question or comment? Yeah, can you just please make the print larger? Oh, there you yes, go. Yes, of course. Thank you. Yep. Sorry Absolutely. about that. Um, so I think I think you guys just wanted to, to process that, and then uh, I don't know how much of it was wordsmithing or just more general comfort with any sort of shall, should, encourage. Yeah, we were definitely require. On board. Absolutely, right? Um, we're still yeah, we're still on board on that. We has a lot of discussion. Yeah. We're definitely on board with the shall and shall. So I think, let me just uh, scroll up real quick. I think I'm still in LS3 here. Let me just confirm before I start showing you this. Yes, LS3. So that's the lakeside. There aren't a lot of shells in here, but I want to highlight them for you to make sure you. S so, Kathy, are you uh, in Article Three, and what what page are you on? I am on. In Article Three, right? Page five, Article Three, page five. In the PDF, if you have the same version of, as me, it's page forty-one. But that can get thrown off, I think, based on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, like I said, there's not a there's not a lot of shells and those that are in here. I just want to highlight them for you. All sides of a structure shall receive design consideration. That's a shell, but it's a pretty broad open shell. Um, I'm sorry, I'm on 3.0. Oh, sorry, uh, number three, D3. Okay. So this is the, the section that, that talks about sort of some design criteria. Direction last time was you just wanted to continue to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't want anything yeah. concrete. We don't have anything concrete, and I think that's yeah. all good suggestion. Oops, sorry. Just so you know, good I don't feel married to any of this. Yeah. This is again, this is very strongly policy oriented. I don't think that. We're just hoping to get people building, thinking. Yeah. Hopefully, in the right direction. That's our goal. I think it's pretty well stated. You did make a few changes. I know it was like a month ago. There had been something about flat roofs not allowed. You changed that to discourage, just as yep. a reminder. Um, you know, I think that I think it's it's fairly broad with still having some. These are really things. You, there's a like a. If you were to look at a menu, I think there's like you have to do some things on a menu, but it's a pretty broad menu. Yeah. Um, I think. The goal is that this this ensures that you don't get a very basic box with no windows and a doorway and no attention given whatsoever to the lake side of the road. Yep. Um, but I think it still leaves a lot of flexibility for, without prescribing that it must be um, corniced windows or... Yeah. And the DRB gets to look at it as well, correct? Yeah, they'll probably hate me for it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. 
you know, realistically, when, when my staff goes to review a, a DRB application under this, they're going to say, okay, here's my menu, right? And they're going to say, they're going to look for any of these things and do a few check marks. And realistically, if they see that none of them are provided, they're going to flag that. And if they see that somebody included windows and um, any, you know, four or five of these elements, they're going to say four or five of these have been included. And then the, the board can go from there as to negotiate whether that's appropriate. And yeah. I don't think it's strongly prescriptive, but it does set some expectation to not have a box with none of those elements. That's our goal. Yeah. yeah that's our goal. Absolutely. It's not easy. Do you have anything on that one? <laughs> yeah, just again, like I was looking at heights and fences, you know, and just the views of the lake. You know, I think what I heard from the public comment was preserving view views. And um, I just, I guess it's for me, when I drive that down that road, it just irritates me that it feels like automobiles rule that road as opposed to pedestrians. Um, you know, just as I was coming here, it was a family of five, you know, with two little children trying to cross the road to get to um, LS4. You know, they had been at the beach, and I just feel like the use of that, you know, access um, to the bay uh, for beachgoers. I feel like there should be four crosswalks along East Lakeshore Drive. Uh, you know, and I know it would slow traffic down and probably irritate people, but. I just feel like inhabitants, you know, should be able, we talk about accessing, you know, increasing access. And I, I think it's unfortunate that people have to take their lives in their hands to cross that road. And I just would want to shift a little bit the thinking, you know, to make it easier for pedestrians to have egress, egress, I guess that's what, and access to be able to cross that road and get to the lake. I'm not sure what we can do in the development regulations. When Brian Osborne yeah. rips that road that's up. That's not what we're discussing. But that's all right. When Brian that's... Osborne rips the road up, no, that's, that's the person you want to grab. Because it does say, considers challenges to a result being. Yeah, and I think um, yeah. some of that parking language that we talked about might help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, about not, not forcing a vehicle's rear end to, to hang into the street. But when I look like at Marble Island, they have crosswalks there, and they're not attached to any sidewalks. They don't go to sidewalk to sidewalk. Right. You know, so yeah. I don't understand why we couldn't cro put the crosswalks in. I don't know. Yeah, I, and you live on the, 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 the planning drive. commission cannot put them in. Is uh, no. I guess all I can say. Oh, the plan. Okay. Yeah, the yeah. Planning commission. Whether the town okay. can or not is a question for a different department and a different board. Okay. But the planning commission can't just okay. say thou shalt. Make it easier to access. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Rebecca, I guess I'm so intrigued to hear from Rebecca on the design pieces. <laughs> you know, as, as long as it's not dictating what has to go there, and I think. Do you think it achieves it, or do you yeah, have recommendations? I think if someone came to a DRB with a, a box, uh, let's say no fenestration on the face in the street. They wouldn't get it through because it's not like anyway. Yeah. I mean, lacking a design review board, I think is pretty much the best we can. Do you feel like it leaves it open enough that it it allows a variety of creative? I think so. Approach. I think so. I I, I heard probably, that was another concern. Yeah. I mean, as I pointed out, you know, things that aren't exactly flat, but maybe a, a low sloped roof or something. That there's ways of doing it that are pleasant looking. I'm just hoping that the DRB wouldn't review, see this and say, okay, flat roofs are discouraged, but they say, you know, no flat roofs. I, it's it, it's kind of subjective. Yeah. Um, and it depends on who's on the DRB at the time. I think so. But I think it's worth a test. I think we have to do something. Is that phrase one that you wanted to revisit? I don't know how, how else to, to say it. So, you know, most people like the cottage style, the cottage look. Yeah. That's fine. It's just like, I, I don't like to tie designers' hands. Yeah. Um, I think it's 
before they go, because we can't continue the way, <laughs> the way it's going. You want to public input? If you'd like to have a suggestion, Play, you have to step up to the mic oh, and okay. state I, your name, even though we're not oh, doing that, but we'll yeah, take my, one. My Go name's ahead. Jason Lakeway. I live on um, South Bay Road. Okay. Jason, Bob? can you spell your last name for me again? I'm sorry. Delapostrophe, capital E, C-U-Y-E-R. Thank you. <laughs> I don't really have a dog in this fight other than I just read through that, and it that looked to me like it said, don't be a jerk. If you're a jerk and you apply, the DRB is going to make you do something to make it aesthetically appealing. I, I think it looks fine. Thank you. My opinion. All right. That's about what we're looking for. Okay, I'm going to slide down. Um, just as a reminder for the audience and for um, the commission, uh, we are still very early in this process, even though it feels like we've been talking about it for a little while. Um, we still have to have a meeting that we would warn a hearing in. So that's another meeting that's not a hearing. Then we would have to have a warned public hearing. So that's another opportunity. That could take one or more meetings. Then there is a select board warned public hearing. So at the very, very least, there are three more opportunities to think, comment for um, the public and for board members as you continue to think on this or see something that inspires you somewhere. or um, So at least three more, just as a reminder. Um, okay. What's up? Can you... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Dang it, wait. Can we I have, ask one more, question. one more question? I was just wondering about the parking areas, not expanding it or anything, but they just all seem so different on the LS3 side. Is there any way to standardize it a little bit more so it doesn't look so ragged? I think it's very hard because so much of that is grandfathered. Um, I mean, I wouldn't change the size or the amount of parking space they have, but just to make it, you know, some has grass and gravel and some has like, I don't know, they're all different and I just didn't know if there was a way to get it a little bit more cohesive along the road. I think that goes under the, you know, <laughs> a lot of them are already grandfathered and been there for enough years yes. and you can't ask somebody to dig up their driveway and park it on for 20 years and put grass there or it's, stone or whatever the case yeah. may be okay yeah. sorry i'm realizing my markup was turned off Sorry about that. Um, so parking, did we, we, did we finish that last time? You guys were comfortable with the parking? Or did you want to go back to that? I think that was an LS3. I can't remember, I'm sorry. So the parking. Parking. So this was something I threw a spaghetti at the wall for you to think about. It does not exist in LS1 and 2. So that's this section E here, additional standards for all lots in LS3. No expansion of vehicle use in parking areas may be permitted unless they are located to the side of principal buildings. So again, this is for ones that are new parking areas. Anybody who comes in and says, hey, I want to just expand my parking. I'm still under 40%. This says you can't put it in front of the building unless, um, or even to the side, unless a vehicle can park outside of the right-of-way. So you can't create a new parking area that is six feet deep, for example. Standard parking space runs about 18 feet deep um, and about nine feet wide. That's a little bit larger than a vehicle, so you don't open a door into people. But um, so we would be looking for a number if you like this language that showed that a vehicle could be outside of the right-of-way. So if somebody comes in with a six by six space, says this is my new parking area, this would allow the board or staff to say no. You put a vehicle here, half of it is over the white line and into the road. Um, beyond that, it also states 
that you have to be able to enter and exit that space without backing onto the road. Spaghetti at the wall. I could, it's a little strong. Um, it's meant to reflect what I'd heard from a lot of folks at our meeting about some of the issues. Um, so this would say, if the only thing you have is that nine by 18 space, and yep, it's just off the road, but the only way to get in and out of it is to back onto the road, that wouldn't be allowed. This is only for new construction. This is for new parking areas, new parking. so it wouldn't right. impact something yeah. that exists today. Right. It's if you come in and say, hey, now I've got eight bedrooms because the sewer is in, and I've got to put, okay, I, I need more parking. Go ahead. Come on up to the mic. Give your name, please. Ken Pusey. I live on East Lakeshore Drive. So for E1, when I read that, I read... You're, you're forcing people to park on the side of, right. of their house. And remember we said we, we valued having lake view. Well, now you're putting more vehicles blocking lake view by forcing them to the side of the building. So that's my comment. OK, thank you. better with my minutes this time so we're going to catch deal because we do not want anything else in that road there's no doubt about that yeah so that would mean people could back into that space right if it's 18 yeah, feet deep i think deep. that's something that rebecca brought up last time I think it was i know that there's some spaces uh, this is more we went to park on, it's actually a building with LS4, and you pulled in and you had to back out into the road. It's very scary. So what I tend to do is you back into the driveway so that when you're leaving, it's a little bit safer. Mm -hmm. But I thought, I would have something to say about backing into it. Um, when the state statutes, you're not supposed to back out into a thoroughfare basically. Yeah, yeah. You, you can spot. back into your spot so you go past it and you back in and you pull out because when you're backing out you can't see okay. I just happened to pull it up online real quick yeah. to make sure I was right, <laughs> right. so and that is something if somebody does almost oh if you want to do that great but we're letting you know now you got to pull past your driveway and back in you can't whip in quick and then back out and expect traffic to stop for you Yes, yeah, so to, it, it's a very dense paragraph. I think there are three decision points for you here. One is, um, as, as was pointed out, is, is it, would you like it to include that parking, new parking, new parking, should be to the side or would you prefer it to the front or is there no preference? So that's a decision point for you that I would like to hear um, on. The second is, the idea of a space sufficient for a vehicle not on the road. I think I've seen a lot of head nods on that one. And then the third is, does the space also have to allow you space to maneuver off the road? Or is it sufficient to have a space that's big enough and hope people do what the law requires of them by backing in? So I think those are the three decision points. Go ahead. So what's the rationale for the side, parking on the side of the house? I think it's just, it's, uh, it's, it's standard language in, uh, in some of other, our other districts about parking to the front um, of, and when we say side, um, it means not in a front yard. I guess I should clarify that. Um, so it wouldn't be allowed in that front yard space. Um, Otherwise, you know, I don't, I think it's about having the presence of a building, typically. I shouldn't say just to LS3, but when you talk about no parking in front of a building, it's so that it, it enhances, theoretically, the pedestrian experience and because you are, you're feeling building, not <coughs> going down a road and just feeling cars. Mm -hmm. 
that is the idea, whether or not that outweighs the concern about the view, the view of the lake being better than the view of the house. Right. So theoretically, you would not want to block the view of a nice structure. But in this case, there might be a competing view. That, that is, a, you know, that is the thing to weigh. Yeah. So that's decision point one. Mm -hmm. So first, you have to have enough room to be able to back park in front of the house. That's rule one. If it was a new parking area. If it's a new parking area, so they have to have the 18 feet yeah. minimum. 18 feet, or can they park parallel? Or parallel. Yeah. Or parallel. Yeah. Parallel would be preferred. Yeah. Sure. I think it makes it easier for everyone. Yeah. Pull in, pull out. Yep. As long as they have enough room. As long as they have enough room. Yeah, to safely pull in, pull out. Yeah. So on LS3, just in most cases, there's limited space to even put more parking us on the side. Do we determine that in LS3 you don't allow any more parking? You're all pretty well filled to the max as it is. Well, I suppose that's a fourth decision point that I didn't raise. Yeah, no new parking areas at all is an yeah, option. That, that would also stop people from putting too big of a place where there's no place for anybody to park that lives there. So that is an option, yes. Just another question. If someone tears down a building, is that considered new construction? If they were going to rebuild it? you know, on the footprint of the original structure. Yeah, so generally when we review those, um, if they have a well-established area for parking that is largely dependent on where that footprint is, they'd be allowed to keep that. Um, if it was impervious, that was a patio, and now they want to make it parking, that's still a new parking area, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be reasonable because if, if somebody were to rebuild their building and suddenly you say no parking. But we would look at historical photographs and try to figure out, um, has there been creep lately that comes up, creep happens, um, where somebody has had a space or two associated, but in the last two or three years, suddenly they have four more spaces. So we would say that's not permitted with a tear down and rebuild. What's our um, what's our requirement for parking on a regular? You mean by number? Yeah. Two. So we minimum maximum is two. You maximum. don't have a maximum. No maximum. So we start with two because there will be no creep. You can put four out there yeah. for the fact I mean, that you can fit four. Again, right? this is like the to address the people who are coming in saying, "I want more." But they, where are they going to put them? So what we want to make sure is they can have all they want, but they have to make sure it's safe within our requirements. So if you can't put more because you can't get the 18 feet, how can you put beside the house or in front of the house? Well, and you might not say, as Bob said, you can have all you want. You might just say, no, no, no more. No more. Yeah, it's possible. Are there any? Yeah. On LS3, I doubt there's any way can fit And this, fit this language is not proposed for LS4, just to be clear. This is yeah. LS3 alone. Just LS3. Alone. Just LS3. Yeah. Which, to me... If you look at those lots, if you spent any time, they've got them pretty well max parked hard surfaces as you can get. Yeah. I can't think there's anywhere if you drive around and look at them to add more parking spaces. Yeah. Some of it is formalizing it. Yeah. Where it wasn't formalized before. I have an application in right now where they are proposing three new spaces. A tear down and rebuild had been grass. So so that, that's a good example. So they want three new spaces. In Are addition we to the two they already have? I don't remember how many they already have. They just labeled them as new. Right, so the three new spaces that they want, as of right now, if they're six by six, you really can't do much about it. Is that right? If they already have those spaces, yeah. These are three new ones. These are three new, no parking area spaces, not three units. No, so that's what I mean, three new parking oh, spots. Yes. So they want to stick them in there, but right now we're saying what? Right it's, now it's because really they can't get the right away. We yeah. can't get we can't get them into the right away. There's so no way, the, right? Go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. There's no way they get into the right away in those parking spaces, no matter what. That's that's right. Right. Absolutely. So even though they want three new spaces, they will have to have enough room to pull those cars off the main road. Yes. No matter what. 
Yes. Correct? Without this language. Without this language? Yes. Okay. And without how much lot coverage would that change? The right away line there is pretty tight. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I actually have no problems with controlling the parking lot, but to yeah. keep people doing it. Because you're, you're right, people just scream in there and their cars are hanging out all the time or their motorcycles or whatever, and then they start talking before you know it, they're in danger for themselves. I see it all the time. So. Yeah, I mean, I, as you guys know, I mean, parking just came up as such a big issue in, the, in our outreach, and so I wanted to have something in here yeah. for you to respond to. But it's, it's new, and it's different, and it's... In most cases, you're increasing parking, you're also increasing impervious surface, correct? That is true. So, in this area, on the side of the lake, for all we're fighting to clean our lake up to allow them to even have any more parking spaces kind of makes me how much lot coverage do you have in grandfathered in and the rest that's just yeah all right we'll give you three more spots and the water can run in the lake that much faster It's a tough one because you're building a new building. We don't want people crossing the street as much as possible. They'll find parking somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just the nature of the beast. People who come to visit, they will find parking somewhere. So they find it across the street. Well, the neighbors in one of the neighborhoods start walking the road. We don't want that. We definitely don't want any vehicles in the right of way. So we, we've eliminated that. But we don't want to park a lot. Mm -hmm. Right. Especially, like I said, and on that side, right next to the right. lake. I'm amazed there. that there's somebody that can put three more parking spaces or ask for three. But you're right. They're, every single lot, it seems, is maxed. They've been there for 50, 100 years. If we say no more parking spaces, what do you have to go on? Pictures. Because that's probably. Yeah. Yeah. That, we look through historical ortho photography where you can see parking areas. And what they're using have. now has to be off the right of way, obviously. Um, right? You so, know, we don't, I mean, I don't know what the police do. Planning right. and zoning certainly doesn't go by and see. No. Yeah, and I understand that part. But my idea is... You, know, you drive down on a Saturday, you know that there's a lot of... I think you can ask anyone who lives in the neighborhood. There's yeah. probably a lot of people who are parked over. Yeah. And that might be their only parking. And maybe it's that they were supposed to have one car that fit parallel, and they're like, well, we can fit three if we do this. Yeah. And pull in straight. Um, it's tough to figure out what people have... I mean, you can't take... You can't take exist. You can't take the full extent of existing parking away because then you render your home unusable. But our our <coughs> problem isn't with what's there now. Obviously, yeah. we're gonna we're allow that. So our problem is what do we do about new stuff? Yeah. I do like that it kind of states what you're looking for. I like what that it states what you were looking for for parking mm -hmm. to try to make the street safer. Mm -hmm. And I hear about the view, but there's not too many properties that have a side yard that would meet these standards. It's pretty tight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, someone would have to probably buy the lot next door to tear, tear down the structure and put parking in. I can see that, but then you'd have cars instead of a two story. I think largely this would address the people who are trying to formalize what they're already doing yeah. that maybe they shouldn't be doing. Sure, come on up. Linda Ganell from Lakeshore Drive. Um, some of the properties across on L3 are camps and they're closed and then others are homes. So how does that play in when they're talking about snow removal and all of those components for when somebody's actually living there in the wintertime? How does that play into the parking piece? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, snow, the extra tricky thing is that um, 
you can't do you can't officially do a site plan or apply site plan standards to a single family home in Vermont. It's exempt from site plan review. And snow storage is something that we look at in a site plan review for as a site plan standard for lots that could be so it's it's pretty cha it, it's common sense but from a uh, legal review perspective i think it would be very be very hard to consider that because it is a site plan standard um so i think we're we're happy about the idea that we think there should be something we, correct yes. we're all looking at yeah yeah we're all looking like there should be something some type of, and this is the start of a direction. Now, what you haven't you, limited anything on this other, other than the fact that this is what's expected. So the three new spots come in under this. You will look at them and you'll say, this is, the, this is the criteria. If you fit this, you will get your three new spots. Well, how do you feel about the parking in the front of the building? I think some guidance there would be. I personally, if you can make it safe, would just soon have it in front of the building. It doesn't bother me that much. Only because on LS3, it's such a tight road anyways. Right. You know, it's, it's just so tight. Do you know if the sewer, like, with the road and kind of hooking up the homes, is that going to either expand the opportunity for parking or will it keep it exactly the same? Do you know? Yep. That's a good question. I have no idea. I believe that the intention is not to make any impacts there. Yeah. Could we just, could we, would you be able to ask Brian, like, just that question? Yeah, I'm sure he's going to tell. I, the intention, I know, because it came up in the way, in the sewer discussions, is that okay. there, in my, my right hand, that there's no impact on. There's no impact. There's no need to buy right of way. There's no need to tear down homes for it. But it's not going to expand. It's going to stay the same. The road is going to stay the same width, and whatever parking people had is going to remain the same. Yeah, I mean, I can't speak to striping if a shoulder yeah. width will change or something, but I don't. I don't think that's the. I think it's going to look a lot like it does now, just pressure. Yeah. yeah. So, um, just because this one's super easy, am I hearing? I at least heard from Rich and maybe a nod from Sarita. But there was no strong desire to keep the side of the building. That would mean removing that highlighted section there. No. I'm not 100% on that. No. Mm -hmm. no. Because you don't have the room in front of your house, and the only place you can put it is, is on the side. Otherwise, you have no parking. Uh, I think it has to, something has to be in there. Mm -hmm. As I said, most of the properties don't have a side yeah. to them, but there are a few properties that you could. Well, this won't force. If she uh, takes that out, this is gives this you both opportunities to be in the front and on the side. And she's taking it out. No. Yeah, so it takes it out from the unless. So it says it, uh, it doesn't require you to be to the side. If you could put it in the front, you could. Yeah. As drafted here, you would not be able to put a new I parking see. area in the front. I see. So this would give them the option in front for Yes. Okay. If I remove that, it would give them the option in the front. Especially if they're building new, they will take that into consideration for it with whatever they're building. The door comes out the side, yeah. walkway. A lot of this might be a move point too because they already have the maximum coverage they can this have. This might apply to one anyway. property on yeah. the whole street. Who exactly. knows? Exactly. So <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. They might be working way too hard for something that they can't do anything anyhow. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> so I think I've think I saw heard yeah. yep. it's some of these edits I'm gonna make later but since I'm right here yeah I'm just absolutely. gonna do it right in front of you yep um, okay um, let's keep going I think can you just say what page and articles yes. you're I'll let you know when I stop great thank you this one's highlighted but you talked about it so this was that ceiling for coverage you've said so basically, we'll take this whole thing out. No increase for green infrastructure. Actually, what the heck, I'm right here. Uh, 
Um, but keep the requirement, I think is what you said. Yeah. You're still in LS3, right? You are in LS4 now. Yeah, article, so they're both in Article 3. Uh, I think that this is very similar language as far as the design standards go. You didn't make any changes to those. Um, the other, okay, so now I'm going to jump because the other pieces that involve LS3 and LS4 are those tables. Are you okay jumping to that section? A quick save. So we talked at length. I think they're stored separately. Show you this, but don't make edits. I don't seem to have the raw one here. Sorry, I couldn't get on the network, so I had to put things on the thumb drive, and it looks like I put the same table twice. Zoom in in a moment, it's just faster to scroll. <clears throat> so, dimensional standards. We talked at length about the appropriate height limits. You guys agreed to leave 40 feet for LS4, that is consistent with what is allowed for the building height in R2, which is what it currently is and what's sort of in the neighborhoods behind it. LS3, we talked about, um, I think we'd had 20 feet in as a placeholder. What we talked about is that 20 feet does not get you two stories unless you have a flat roof. It's almost impossible. <laughs> um, if you are the way that we measure. So we measure to the peak. Um, I looked at a lot of examples of two basic two stories without like vaulted um, or really tall ceilings. Uh, largely what I kept coming up with for a traditional two story was about 25.5 feet. Does that sound for a... Uh, sorry. I, all on six pitch? Does that sound the standard good? roof pitch, let's just call it. Is that that. standard? I believe so. Yeah. But I'm not a builder. Yeah, so for a standard roof pitch, 25 and a half, 25 feet, six inches would get you two stories. Could they still do, uh, like, if on the slope, like a walk-out basement, two stories in a yeah, walk-out so, basement. So something to keep in mind is it wouldn't necessarily be two stories at the road level. So we measure from average pre-construction grade. So if you are on a slope, as most in LS3 are, um, you're starting to measure below the road grade. So if the road grade is here, you're not measuring it from the very bottom point. Again, it's the average pre-construction. So you take the four points of the building and you figure out what the average elevation is between those four. And you measure from that point. And it's there to the top. So you would not necessarily on those properties have two stories at the road. 
because you're not measuring from the road. So you'd have one story maybe on the slope side and then one story the road? Depending on the slope. Can I kind of see if I can get this right? So let's say you got a 10 foot slope. You got two points that are on the top, two at the bottom, that means you five foot starts where you do it. Yep. So you're five feet below road grade level. To start with. To start with. And then you're 20 feet above that according to this. Is the bottom of the slope where the water is or where the building starts? Where the building is. So average pre-construction. And is that, so let's say place So you can't build it up. The reason we use that language is you can't put yourself a mound in and then build it on top of that and say, I'm starting from up here. Yeah. So you would not be able to build up that slope, yeah. flatten it all out, and do 25 feet. So average pre-construction. And I assume that some of the measurements from the bottom have to be so many feet above the high water mark because of flood constraints. <clears throat> yes, or else they have to meet certain flood proofing design elements. Um, but again, keep in mind that a lot of these are rebuilds. They use the same foundation. Um, and so their, their points are set for them as to what they're starting from. So do we want to limit it at 30 feet or 28 or? Because 25 and a half is yeah. minimal. Give them a little bit of leeway. And again, this is making a broad assumption that you were looking at two-story buildings. Which we were. If you are not, <laughs> and that's not the right number either. If you're looking at one or, I don't know, one and a half. It's interesting looking from the water how many are going straight up with like even almost two sometimes stories below the road and then two above. Um, it's just interesting. It's just kind of very yeah, straight. I, I had hoped Pam and I talked about getting onto the beach side now that the... I, I'm not familiar enough with what is present on the lake side, on the lake side of the lake side, yeah. um, and how many are are really built up below what you can see. Mm -hmm. um, I'd hope to bring you that sort of information, but I didn't quite Sounds get out like there yet. Trip. Yeah. yeah, kayak trip, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. More. Boat trip? More. <laughs> Bob's going to take us. Um, so. I think you need a little more than 25 feet if you are looking at, I didn't see anything less than 25.5. Steeper pitches were closer to 27 or 28. But those are pretty atypical pitches. Um, probably. So 28, 30. We know we don't want tight. Let me go back on that one. Rebecca, does that include a basement? Does that include a basement? A few stories down there. Yeah, I, I don't think most, most of those properties are taking advantage of every square foot they have. I mean, so have it could be like a walkout. Two stories. Yeah, I mean, basement is a, is a, a term that doesn't mean that much when you're, t it could be ground level, but still living space or below grade at the road. But so it could theoretically be three, depending on the pitch of the, from the lake side. Uh-huh. But you would not see three. Right. on the roadside at 28 feet unless you had a very flat 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 lot you'd be really tight at 28 feet for a pitched roof i don't believe there's a flat lot on your last three <laughs> <laughs> um and then most of these have a different height for a flat roof which we didn't talk about but um, so you could have a second height listed. Most of them about five feet less if you're not having any sort of pitch on it. We're doing all we can to discourage the flat roof anyhow, so why not do that as well? You're going to go that route, 28 with a standard roof and 22 with a flat. That'll help discourage it even more. Yes, that gives you about 11 feet per floor, which 
should be enough for they're all nine foot ceilings that's for sure that's standard yes. Is nine standard now? It's eight feet. <laughs> no, I mean, now if you go into the new houses, they're yeah. all nine feet. But for the small cottages, it's usually eight feet or below. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're going to, when they build from scratch, they'll go to the max every time. Yeah. So to put it in context, I, I did look at uh, some of the newest rebuilds. I was going to ask Those you. Those pretty much hit their 40 feet. Yeah. Well, like, 40 feet. Right, okay. Like they're right. On, they're on flat lots, too. Those ones are, yeah, they're sort of. Some of them, but yeah, they hit their 40 feet, and it, and it's challenging for us. We can't get out there and drop a tape from the top. Right. Um, we do ask them to certify it through an engineer, whose professional credibility or the, or their architect is on the line. It's the best we can do. But those were permitted within two feet of 40 feet, 38, 39, 39 and a half. Yeah every single one of them. So if we looked at the tallest one on East Lake Shore in the LS3 and took 10 feet away from that, that would be above what we're looking at in terms of maximum? Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna vary at what you see on the road based on what that slope is, but yep. generally. Roughly, okay. You take 10 feet away, you take a story away generally. Okay, I, I like that. I just, you like that? Yeah. Bob, yes. Yeah. Rebecca. Yeah. So when you get closer to the east end of East Lake Shore Drive, where it does flatten out, you could have a house up to whatever we decide, 28 feet. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's kind of a give and take deal. I'm just trying to envision all the houses. <laughs> well, it's it's yeah. three store. I mean, 28 feet. Please correct me. 28 feet on a flat lot, you're not getting much of a pitch, right? Eight foot ceilings, that's 24 of it. You put in space between. Yeah, I mean, it's not unusual. And a lot of pitches in Vermont are steeper than 612. Okay. Builders like 612. Some get steeper than that. So, <laughs> so 28. Does 28 feet on a flat lot get you three stories in a pitched roof? I don't, I don't think no. so. No. Yeah. So you, someone might want to stick a dormer out there. It'll appear to be three stories. Okay. So I heard 28 feet for a pitched roof. And I heard Bob throw out a shorter number, 23, for a flat, but I didn't hear anyone else weigh in on that. Yeah. Did you want a difference for a flat? It would be worth a definitely, It definitely would probably look like a three-story building if it was on a flat lot. On a flat lot, yeah, with a flat roof, you could do three stories. Yeah, and there'll be a lot of flat roofs. At 28. Yeah. If we don't do anything, there'll be all flat roofs. No matter how discouraging we would like to say. So I'm hearing 23 for flat? Yeah. So when people spoke at the public hearing about maintaining the character of East Lake Shore Drive, do you envision that this kind of regulation would help to meet that request? You know, and nothing is going to keep it exactly what's there, but I think that the newest buildings, from what I understand, are a full story taller than most of what's existed there historically. I don't know that there's anything that would have hit 40 feet that's older than maybe the last 10 years. Does that sound? Even less. Having not spent a lot of time out there 10 years ago. Yeah. Does that sound, I don't know, for anyone who's? That'd be the oldest. Huh. Or less than five. Less than five. Yeah. So I think, you know, does it get you that camp character? Not necessarily, because again, as we've said, it's very hard to define, mm -hmm. but it doesn't let you get as far away from it. Okay. If that makes more sense. Yep. Okay. That's our goal. Okay. So you guys are comfortable with yep. 
28, 23, leave 40 for LS4. I don't think. Yeah, LS4 is fine. I don't think taking five feet off that's going to do much. I don't know that there's much benefit for a flat roof size, but we could do it. The others say 35. You want to be consistent? Are we talking LS4? LS4, yeah. Yeah. So 35 for flat roof? Sure. Or if it's the same. I don't know that it does much, to be honest with you, but it I've keeps it consistent it. with. Yeah. It says it's 35 flat commercial. Yeah. yeah, let me scroll up a little, show you something a little. Let's look at a typical R2. So R2, 40 foot to the ridge, 35 to the flat. Yeah. Oh, sorry, you guys, it's not showing it's up. Cut off on my end. Sorry, it, it, yeah, I see that now. There we go. So R2. Everything else distinguishes between a ridge and a flat. I see. Oh, there's one interesting 34 foot one. I don't know if that was a typo. Oh yeah, I see it. <laughs> it's like, haha, GD4 at the bottom. That's <laughs> funny. Yeah, we can be consistent with that. You want to be consistent? I'm good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Maybe in a future update we'll figure out if we should get rid of all the differences with flats there but yeah okay so ls4 40 35 yep oh gd4 gets, gets a little bit more yeah that's the wacky one i don't know yeah. what's going on there it's eve ridge. ridge yeah oh i think that's no gd3 is the form based code so i don't know what's going on there <laughs> we're not going to go to X on the uh, list. <laughs> so we're just going to ignore that one. Um, I think that there's two more things to discuss with respect to anything on East Lakeshore. That is the table of uses. I think you guys talked about it last time, but I'm hearing, I think we made it all the way through it, but yes, I definitely made, I don't know made if it all you the way through it. Is that the general a, category? Yes. Had a question about farm stand or something. Well, Funk has in restaurants and so, cultural facilities and marine repair services. And like you none did? Of, none of those can be on East Lakeshore Drive. So let me go to the top here. And I do want to at least acknowledge both for the record and as a point that was raised, you all in your packet received an email from Rick Davey um, to be clear, he provided those comments before the draft was out. So his, his comments were in response to the original draft mm. and not, so he sent those to me before this was shared. Um, he did raise a question about a use, I think with respect to multifamilies. He also raised a question about, um, mobile homes not being permitted. Um, I will tell you on the record that if you allow a single family home, you must allow a mobile home. I thought he had some more mobile home parks. And said. then he also said mobile home, I think. Because the park's not allowed. So the park is not a P, but there was something. I do have a letter if you guys. So just to just to put it on the record. And not, not multifamily? Um, again, his comments came in ahead of the sharing of the building types, which we're gonna get to next. And so it was, you know, when somebody says multifamily, it could be anything from three units to 50. And that's what currently existed in the regs. So I, I think having spoken to him directly, his his fear about the multifamily was was thinking about something bigger than four. Two, four. Mm -hmm. um, I, but I, I don't want to speak for him, other than what his email says. Um, mobile homes should not be allowed in LS1 through LS4 as well as mobile home parks. 
but again, I'll tell you, fair housing law is very strong. If you allow a single family, you must allow a mobile home, period. You, you can't choose so um, you can not allow mobile homes but only in places where you do not allow a single family home so a little insight there um, any other comments on the use table at all do you want to go through them do you want to just respond to questions Qu you have questions well, I yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, I was just thinking, it looks like uh, there already is a marine repair service on East Lake Shore Drive, but... What number are you at? So I'm at 2.300 on page 5. 2.300? I love that they're numbered. Well, the question, again, I would keep in mind, this isn't about permitting what exists, it's about permitting new uses. Yeah. So okay. if you were to allow marine sales, it means somebody could tear down their house and put in a marine sales shop. Anything that's there is grandfathered as long as it doesn't cease its use for more than six months. I'll just, this is just my opinion, but I, under condition of use, I'd love to see, you know, a marine repair services if someone wanted to do that. Cultural facilities, which is at 5.400. A restaurant with outdoor seating, a small restaurant with outdoor seating, 8.100. Those were the three that I... Sarita, just to be clear, were you talking about LS3 or four or both? Um, I think it was LS3 and LS4. Just making a note for the minutes. There's been a lot of chat. I don't know if you've seen it, if anybody has seen it on the uh, front porch forum about Colchester and amenities. And it, it goes back and forth. You know, people don't want to look, probably 15 comments on there, um, don't want to look like Essex or Williston. But there's another group that would really like more amenities. You know, small restaurants, a coffee shop. East Lake Shore Drive? Or well, they general? didn't say specifically. I think they said in Mallet's Bay. So, so we're permitted all up with LS1 and LS2 for right, that. Right, right. You know, when, once we got to LS3, we were more calm about putting commercial use out there. I think that was our drive, right? It was our drive. Um, the other issue was, like you said, you know, the marine repair shop or something. Now you're talking about parking more traffic mm -hmm. on that road and I think that's where we're kind of coming from we want to discourage a lot of traffic like that it's kind of reserved for yeah. West Lake Shore Drive well I think as long as that one is grandfathered in yeah. you know just um, I just think there's going to be more boating you know more marinas and more need for maintenance and services but I, I think a, you know a coffee shop a small coffee shop Again, a chance for the community of East Lake Shore Drive, you know, to, to have a place where they, you know, can cross paths with one another. I mean, people were and people were talking about how, you know, that I don't know. It just seemed like the people who wanted so more amenities wanted more opportunities to meet community members, you know, to have some, a place to gather, meet people. Something that I would offer you. I would recommend at, at this level to not include those, but we've talked about adventuring into these building typologies. So when you talk about a small coffee shop, um, what is that, right? What is small? Um, should you wish to, after the supplement, say, boy, if something looked and felt like a single family home and served coffee. That's sort of what's my vision. Um, again, I'm not, not speaking for this or even recommending it, but if you as a commission wanted to proceed down that path, 
I'd wait for another supplement where we can explore what that looks like um, in terms of a small shop or what its needs would be. I think it's just more complicated than you'd probably want to get into here um, because you probably want to talk about what is it other than just the use. Is it a certain building type? Is it no more square than X foot. square footage? Mm -hmm. Is it, um, which is, you probably, I would recommend you don't want to hold up the other things you're trying to do now to figure that out. Okay. Did you want to comment on that? Yeah. Uh, living, living in Lakeshore 4, I, I don't feel the need to have a coffee shop on Lakeshore 3 or Lakeshore 4. If I want to grab coffee, I'll go to Lakeshore 1 or Lakeshore 2. I, I don't, we don't need to commercialize Lakeshore 3 and Lakeshore 4. We've got Lakeshore 1 and Lakeshore 2 for that. So okay, that's my you. comment. Thank you. I'm along the same lines of traffic as well and making people stop there and cross and across that road that's already busy if you're coming from the other direction and you throw in, you've got a Jiffy Mart, the Pickle Perch, the Breakfast Place at the Lakeshore Pioneer Inn, the Guilty Plate just reopened or is in the process of reopening. Good. Yeah, good old Rosie's. What's that? Yeah, Rosie's. And Rosie's. No way. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm hearing no changes from the majority yeah. for this one. Am I? Right. For the majority. I don't want to speak for you. <laughs> Just want to reflect what I've heard. Yep. Yeah. You can always get another bite. For now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on the table of uses? So we have. Go back to the beginning. We have in there from multiple sources. Yeah. Yes. So. This is a, so what we talked about is, multi, again, multifamily is, as it's, it currently exists in the regulations, multifamily is anything greater than two units. Um, this would allow you, this creates a new menu for you and I keep going back to menus, where you can say, boy, I really don't want a 12-unit multifamily or a 60-unit multifamily, but I'm totally cool with a five-unit townhouse. Um, so this creates just more categories than just multifamily, because it's a big jump from three to 60. Um, so this gives you a few more tiers. I don't claim that this is fully developed. There's a lot more we can do with this. I think that it's a very basic start for things you might choose to be allowed that exist in the world between two and 60 units. We could either further develop it now if you're interested or further develop it in other districts at another time. Rich and I talked a little bit about you know, is it appropriate to have these like 12 unit apartment buildings on like Middle Road? It kind of different out there. Um, and is there something that would allow you to have something in between where you're like, boy, you know, these, these townhomes that exist are, are a different feel than a, a big 16 unit box. So this is a, a first look at something like this. I know it's your first look. So are you saying that <coughs> multiplex small um, three to four units? Yes, yeah. yeah, sorry, that's cut off a little bit there. And that would be what's allowed on one piece of property no matter how big or small it is. It would still have to comply, all of these would have to comply with the density. Yes. It's just how you allocate those four units. So um, there are actually quite a few already existing on East Lake Shore on the non-lake side. Um, a shore, I'm gonna get it wrong. Sandy Shore Terrace, Sandy Shore, I'm saying it right. 
Uh, there's a there's a fourplex there. Um, you probably don't even know it. The brown building is that what you mean? I think it's blue. It doesn't face the road. It sort of sits perpendicular to it. That's four units. It's four units. They're set up two over two. Okay. Um, it's really not much bigger than some of the houses that are there, but there's four. These are apartments. This particular one. Um, There are some larger properties. Um, mm -hmm. The idea is we don't want this big box, right? Right. But on these bigger pieces of property, you could probably see a development where you could have, let's say, I'm going to say duplexes out there scattered on the property, you know, and it would look like individual little homes around mm -hmm. it, but there are duplexes. Mm -hmm. But that would be multiple units on the same property. Does that kick you into a multiplex, a large multiplex, even though they're little? No, this is all about what the, the, the structure is. The individual It's the structure individual structure. That would sit on it. So yeah. it could have two small multiplexes, or it could have five. Yeah. On the property. And further down okay. the road, you know, with more um, consideration, you might say, boy, especially on big properties, not necessarily East Lakeshore, you might say, we're tired of 50 duplexes existing in a subdivision. Let's look for some variety. You can't have more than 50% of any given type. So this is something you could build on in the future. It's got limited applicability, I think, for East Lakeshore. But starting to have these types allows, I think, a, a lot of flexibility going forward in other districts and other considerations. For here, what I think it does is say, you can have more than a duplex on these large lots, but it's not going to be this 16-unit um, box. Because um, you did say that you liked that sort of there's a condo development of townhouses and you guys liked that. So, but if you just, right now, that is a multifamily. And if you allow that, you would also have to allow the 16 unit box. Um, One of the things about the whole sewer around the bay was people were concerned about things like this and how many structures are going to pop up all of a sudden. And because now there's sewage available to these folks. So this wouldn't change sure. the density. To be clear, your lot, if you have a 10 acre lot and it's roughly three units per, per acre in, in the, um, on the non-lake side there in, in what would be LS4, so you've got a 10 acre lot that's 30 units. It's 30 units, it's 30 units, it's 30 units. You're deciding whether those 30 units have to all be single families whether those 30 units could be um, three rows of 10, whether those 30 units are 15 duplexes, but it's still only 30. At the end of the day, it's 30. And that's an extreme example, just so nobody gets worried about all these 30 units popping up. Um, I don't think there's a lot of properties, um, but there are some that are bigger than you think. Um, could it be mixed? I mean, could it be multiple, like three and six and so it could be mm -hmm. you know eventually you might want to mandate something like that or not but it could it's whatever as drafted here it's whatever somebody proposes mm -hmm. um, but it couldn't be something that's not on this list so it couldn't be this multi multiplex medium five to twelve units for example would not be allowed here does that make sense mm -hmm. um, so what we're looking at, so we're clear, for Supplement 44. For Supplement 44. We will have to approve this to put into Supplement 44 to put into LS4, correct? Yeah. It, so it's, I, all, it's all going to go. It's, it's gonna not going to look like this. I got it. formatting, but, but yeah. We're going to have to make sure that's part of the deal. Yes. Right? If you don't, if you choose not to pursue this, you'll have to decide multifamily or not 
yeah. in LS4. Right. If you choose not, it means you don't get those townhomes that exist, mm. that the, the ones that you, you have mm. showed favor for. If you choose yes, it means you, who knows what you get. Yeah. So right now, LS4 is all residential, R1, is that correct? It is R2. R2. Yeah. Where multifamily is allowed. That's where it's going. Yeah. And we don't want the big bucks. We all, we're all we're all shaking. Our... So this is the way to kind of control that, but yep. still allow multifamily. Yeah. I feel comfortable with that. Good. Um, so this is a new table. This is this concept is brand new. I don't know that it ends up looking like this because you have to fit it into. I still have to play around with how it fits into the existing structure for table A1 and A2. Yeah, this will have its own 2.5. Because some 2. of this, just to be clear, does apply. You know, there's no changes to other districts. So right now, other residential districts, even your low density ones, your, your R10s, already allow. I shouldn't say there's no changes. That's not true. According to this sheet, um, a small mod multiplex couldn't exist in the R10. So I guess there's there's more to consider here than just that. R10 being sort of your ag zoning, large large lots, <coughs> ten acre zoning. Yeah. Um, I mean, this definitely work. There's no doubt. We this will definitely get us. Yeah. Where we so what I'm hoping be. you'll weigh in on is is less about the formatting and just the concept, right. the definitions, what it means, the number of units. Um, this is sort of new, so you might want to spend a little bit more time figuring out districts. Um, I tried to match what is currently in there so that this wasn't a huge change. Other than the the LS, the new LS four where again right now you could have multifamily of any size as long as the density permits it. So, but for us, um, I get the definitions part. But for if you don't have to change anything for all the other districts, could you just blank out what gets blanked out, but you can leave what's already there. If you want to put the multiplex large in GD3, it, it's just permitted, just like now. Right. So you're not going to make any changes, even though we do this. Yeah, maybe I just don't include it at all right now because I don't want to confuse. I'm not trying to dig into the other districts. Right. No, that's maybe my we point. do in the next that, supplement. I'm trying not to as yeah. much as possible. That's my point. Is this? Can you put it in there and? Yeah. Just make sure the other districts stay the same. So I do need to work on. I guess is what I'm saying. I acknowledge that okay. it's not perfect. So, yeah. It but doesn't just affect. Yes. So I want to make sure it's not. But I want the idea to be understood that all residential districts, and I think right now all residential districts can have a duplex. All residential districts can have, well actually, so LS1 wouldn't allow a townhouse, so that's something to think about. I don't think they could exist there anyway. No. There's no land. Um, and they, their multifamily is not allowed in LS3 anyway, so that's why it's not included there. I mean, or I mean LS1. LS1. You can't have multifamily in LS1 right now. Right. So how do we get just, so basically multiplex large and LS4, if we didn't do anything, we have to just not permit it. We have, yeah. we have, we have the multi, no, we don't. Yeah, we again, we're back to the yeah. three versus 60. So I'm going to work on how to fit it in to reflect what you're trying to say. Okay. Um, it's not, <laughs> what you don't say can often mean as much as what you do say. So I'm trying to be careful about not having a blank next to multiplex large. Yeah. Um, so maybe they get deleted. I put them in here just to show you where it can go to show you what can come in a future supplement. Yeah. Um, but I'm trying to make sure that we're really only impacting 
policy-wise, LS3 and LS4, but if it reflects what's already allowed in other districts, that's okay, because you're not changing your policy, it's just how we're stating it. So the way you have it written, it also includes R2, R3, LS2, and all two B districts. Yes. So I, That's in keeping with what? I'm pretty Those sure, but this is my intention will be to confirm all of that. Okay. I don't want to make any changes to what exists. Yeah. There might be appropriate ones, but I don't think we want to tackle them right now. Yeah. So I will um, check these against current zoning. I think what I'm hearing is you agree that you don't want to make any changes to allowances. Um, but as far as um, LS4 in particular, how do you feel about townhouses, multiplex, duplex being the right types? Yeah, right. We're good with the, just we don't want big box. Yeah, I'm just thinking of energy use. I'm just thinking, I don't want a big box, but I'm just trying to think, is it more energy use? You know, is it more energy used by oh, different structures? By different structures. If they're built properly, no, right? No, right, okay. And they do have to meet the residential right. energy. Yeah. Right, right. So that probably would yeah. Consideration. yeah. So any new construction will have to meet yeah. those codes. Yeah. yeah. And anything subject to Act 250 will have to even meet more yeah. with the stretch code. I, I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. And what about those? Um, so what really what's listed here for LS1 is that you would not you'd allow single families and duplexes. This would not allow townhouses or multiplexes on LS1. No duplex. Or LS3, I'm sorry. Right. Does that sound in line with what you would like to see? Yes. Okay. Uh, no. So basically no more than two units in a building on LS3. You know, do I see big boxes coming? No. Do I see somebody creating one floor living, a triplex? Yes. Absolutely. So just to be clear, and on the record, you would not want that. That's right. Right? Because I could see studio over studio over studio. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I just, I just want to... That was the character of the <laughs> I just want to highlight yeah. all the yeah. implications. Yeah. I'm not trying to make it a leading statement. I just... Yeah. Yeah, no. and one design or the other doesn't increase traffic. It's 30 units, yeah. whether it's 30 units. So that, that probably would be a change over what's allowed today. If you had a lot large enough to fit three units, there's not a lot of them, mm -hmm. but if you did, you could have stacked, um, you could have a stack of studios or something or one bedrooms, but no. Okay, that's what I'm hearing. Okay. Yep. So for LS3. Do you have any of those in town at all? I am hearing that there are some on East Lakeshore. I don't know if they're legal or not. They're stacked. But I get calls. I don't, I don't know. If on the lakeside that there's apartment over apartment over apartment. And actually, I think there is one that's legal. I don't know anyone. I think it's a, it's a, so it's rentals. Year-round rentals, though. It's apartment. Apartment, Three apartment. Units? Yeah, they've got, there's a basement unit. Uh, okay. Yeah. They're not three stories at the road. There's a basement unit and then two above it. Hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, that's all I have for Lakeshore stuff. All right. All good with that? Mm -hmm. All good? All good? <laughs> all right. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> Thank you again.
Okay, I know the list looks really long. I promise you that many of them are very technical fixes. They're like, hey, we missed a word or we, some of them do our policy. So I will make sure to highlight which ones are which. Um, and I did reorder them to try to put them in order so we can just go down. Are we back at the very beginning? We are up to B, 4B. What page is that on? Yeah, right at the beginning. Right at the beginning. So yeah. these are throughout. I did highlight this for you last time. This is just a reorganization. So every single district had a paragraph for municipal plan, permanent uses, conditional uses, relationship, where it said the same thing 54 times. I deleted them, put it in once at the beginning of the document. Hopefully we can save five or six pages that way. Yeah. That's really all that B is, okay? Yeah. Um, where something was specific to that district, I did not delete it, I left it. So I, like, uh, there's a couple districts, there's additional standards for GD4. I left all those in GD4. Okay, look, we're up to C. Um, updates to the process for zone change requests. Guys, I gotta tell you, when we did this um, policy in February of like, how do you come back in for a request? I had no idea it existed in here. So you guys adopted a policy, totally my fault, that was contradictory to what's in the regulations. I don't know why a policy existed in the regulations. It did. So I deleted all that. That is in 203D, let me show you and just referenced your document. Zone change request. So this said, it was this whole thing about a written request and there's a public notice and defer and it's contradictory to the policy that you had adopted. So delete, delete. <coughs> I don't want to move on until you give me a thumbs up. I was trying to. We can take time. Trying to, if you can just give us the page and the article where we are every time we, we change. Yeah, 203D. Um, your page. Two, article two, page four. Thank you. Gotcha. Now there may be some of this that's worth pulling back. I'm not gonna like delete it from all history. That's worth pulling back into your consideration of a zoning change request policy. But it's odd to have your own policy exist in the regulatory document. I think you should just have it as a separate policy and reference it. Yeah, that's why we did it, basically, yeah. when you started. So, so I think you're good to we'll take it And this out. says you can only hear, you're only supposed to hear a request to change your zoning within six months or something of adoption of a town plan. Yeah. I don't think that's what you wanted. Don't we have like four zoning requests, <coughs> change of zoning requests on hold? Probably. You had a few you kicked to the fall. Yep. Right. We'll pick up back. Yeah. So yeah. That, does that have anything to do with this? No. Okay. I didn't know this existed, to be honest with you, at that <laughs> <Okay>. time. <laughs> that, um, that feels like we separated Planning Commission from DRV days. That's what I think. Yeah, I think it's appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. To pull I, this out. Yeah, they were yeah. all intertwined at one time. Yeah. There's not necessarily bad criteria in here for consideration, but just have it exist okay. in its own document. Yep. <coughs> Good. Okay. Yep. Um, D. So, accessory structures. It is really. When members of the public come in, most people do not know what zoning district they live in. Accessory structures exists in our table of, our dimensional table, 
as its own column, several columns actually. It's been fully dependent on what zoning district you live in. Now we know that even within a single zoning district, every lot can be very different. Um, and the accessory structure dimensions, having tied them to a zoning district, we're creating some real inequalities um, that are better tied to what your lot situation is as opposed to your zoning district. So, for example, to say that an ag, ag's not a great example, but an R3 can look very different if it's a 50 acre lot than if it's a half acre lot. Um, but this would give you that 40 foot accessory structure regardless as it exists today. Plus it had all of these columns and so when members of the public came in just for a shed, they were, I think we're, we're expressing feeling really overwhelming because they didn't know their district. It's easier for them to just know, can I have a shed or not? And how tall? So a lot of this is consolidation of those columns in the table, in the dimensional standards table. I tried to keep them to match what was in there, whether I thought they were appropriate or not. I tried to match them to what was already in there. What I did include that's new. Sorry, is, you want to I'm going to scroll down to it. I'm not on there yet. Okay. Uh, 2.06. I'll give you a page in a moment. Thank you. As soon as I get there. Page 10. Thanks, Bob. Mm. <laughs> In Article 2? Yes. Just about there, I so. Uh, so minor words along the way. I'm not going to point out everyone. Cannot, cannot. Okay. Um, height was just a movement, it's nothing new, sorry. Um, highest points of the structure shall be measured, average, measured from average pre-construction grade. That's not new text, it was just moved, so it shows up as new. Um, Did you say page 10? That was 206. So hmm. I don't know where 206. Okay. 209. 209. I'll get that cleaned up. Page 12. Uh, page 12. So we've added in sort of a purpose statement for accessory structures. Um, that's something that's come up a lot, like what makes, you know, mixed. can I have an accessory structure with nothing else? No, it's not accessory at that point. Um, but comes, that question comes in a lot. Um, there was also a lot of cleanup. You guys made changes to this as part of Supplement 43 that is confusing people, including all three of my zoning administrators. Um, because of the way it, it was written. I think it was meant to clean up something else. I don't know all the history. I've run this by every person in my, my department who will implement it. The idea is the same. The language is just a little bit different in how it's spelled out. Um, this is about exceeding the 50%. So that was in there, but it's just written differently. Um, rather than spell out in the chart 20 feet for accessory structures in most of the districts, this says you're 20 feet and less. Um, there's a difference between a flat accessory structure and a pitched one. Those were already in those charts. Um, 
What's new here that I think was intended by saying more rural districts can have a taller one, this instead says a parcel that's larger. You no, still have to meet, I, I'm sorry, B. B. These are the one, twos, and threes. So the number matches what was in the chart already. What has changed is, how do you get bigger than that? How do you get bigger than 25 feet for an accessory structure? Now keep in mind, accessory structure includes everything from sheds to detached garages. These are taller in my finding than other communities, but I did not make a change to that. I wanted to stay true to what was in there. In some cases, so most often they're actually included in the primary structure. We see more of them in than detached. There are a lot that are detached. But the majority that we see are within the principal structure. We're, we're seeing more, yeah. for sure, I think. So this accessory structure, that would fall under the... If they were system. detached, yeah. But it doesn't apply just to an accessory dwelling unit, because that can oh, exist. I know, I know. But I just don't yeah. think you're, you're talking about heights. The height, yeah. So again, this wasn't meant to, to, to change what was in that chart. It was meant to capture where do you get more than the standard? So the standard of 25 feet for most, how do you get more than that? You get more than that. So you think about a shed or, you know, here's an example I, I've been sharing like a pool house. I recently visited a property for an inspection. It was a large lot, six acres. I sat back from everybody else. There was nothing else around. This enormous pool house. It was beautiful and it looked really appropriate on that site. It didn't stand out. It was probably almost 30 feet tall. That same pool house on a quarter acre lot on a single family ranch looks enormous and has nothing to do with the district. I think it has everything to do with the lot and its size. So that's what I'm trying to, to reflect here, which I think was the intention by going by district, by saying something like an R10, a 10 acre lot, 10 acre zoning. What we're finding though, again, is that the zoning district doesn't really match up and you can't, stereotype them in the way that you think you can. Um, somebody brought up to me the other day that uh, Marble Island, most of Marble Island, you would think would be something similar to like an R2, and it's something like an R10, which I'm not trying to rezone here, but it's not 10 acre zoning, and it would ha allow even on a small Marble Island lot, that 40 foot accessory structure. So I think this is just an attempt to say that it's more about your size and your distance than it is about your zoning district. But don't you have to put some criteria in so you're consistent? Yeah, so they're still in there. So it still says you have to be three acres or more. Mm -hmm. um, you can't just stick it up by the road it has to be to the side or the rear if you're going with something extra large. Mm -hmm. um, it has to be 50 feet from all property lines. So if you were going with this 40 foot accessory garage, shed, pool house, 
you can't just stick it right on your neighbor's property line, no matter how large your lot is. And then if you want to add a bedroom, that would kick in the septic, the wastewater permit. Okay. If it's an apartment. Well, actually any additional bedroom, but yeah. I did try to make an exception for barns and agricultural buildings <coughs> where it wouldn't matter the size of your lot. Um, I don't know. It's probably redundant with state law. It probably doesn't need to be in there. Mm -hmm. But I, that's gonna I just wanted to make it clear. E. Up to 40 feet. Yeah. You didn't put a limit on it. Right. There is a limit, yeah. But it's one of the tallest ones that's allowed without being on a large lot. So where is that? So this is three, 2.09. So it is page, yeah, I had it wrong in the, well, I don't know, 2.09. Article 2, page 13. Thoughts? Thumbs up for now? Move on? I'm good. Good. Yep. Sounds good. All good. Uh, e, very, very simple. We had very inconsistent language. We said accessory apartment. We said accessory dwelling unit. We said accessory house. We said a bunch of things. State statute uses accessory dwelling unit, ADU. I tried to just change all those. Um, that is Article 2, page 14, on to 15. So it's just all about consistency there. No substantive changes. guys are good. I'm going to move on. So when you do this, do you change it in definitions as well? I think, yes. I think I listed definition on this one, right? And definitions 12.02. Yep. So it was changed in the definition. Let me take two seconds. Mm -hmm. You folks that are sitting here, we're done discussing LS three and four, right? This is all just homework for cleaning things up if you don't want to sit through the homework part of this and just fixing definitions and stuff. Items further down the list, I'm interested. Okay. Right. Just wanted to Do just you wanted want to, to make jump sure. around at all or you can nope, just continue on. Okay. Yep. Yep, I'm done. Okay. Now. Um so there is the addition uh, wastewater permits shall be obtained prior to a zoning permit. That's been our practice. We were surprised to find it wasn't actually listed here. So we're just saying you have to get a wastewater permit if you want an accessory dwelling unit. If you want a what? An accessory dwelling unit. Mm -hmm. And you want to add a bedroom, right? I mean, if it's just a pool yes. house without any facilities, right. it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, Does that, um, if you already have a septic that's set up for that, that's not a that's a no-brainer, right? Say you have a three-bedroom house for some reason you have a four-bedroom septic. Yes, yeah, so you still have to get the permit. It might just be that it's no problem getting the permit. Okay, that's good. Yeah, because yep. the question comes up, people will transfer bedrooms. They may have a four-bedroom house, and they're like, oh, we're gonna turn one of these into a storage space and build right. the apartment above the garage. So that comes up. Yep. You still have to get a permit. It's just easy, and there's no cost. Okay, perfect. Um, fences, this is new, 2.10B, I'll give you a page in a moment. That'd be page 17. Yes. So, um, quick, quick history on this one. If you have a foot, a fence above six feet, you have to go to the DRB. Fences, if you've ever tried to buy one, generally come four, six, eight foot heights. 
A lot of people get six foot fences. I think 90% of our fence applications are for six foot fences. We had a gentleman, nice gentleman came in. It was extremely honest in his application. Had a six foot fence panel and the post was two inches taller because they mostly are some inches taller. And if anyone were to implement this by the book, we would have to deny that. The fence is six feet tall. The posts every eight feet hmm. are two inches taller. <laughs> I don't want to have to not implement the regulations, and I sure as heck don't want to implement them, so I tried to just fix it here. <laughs> um, so I just tried to put something in about how we're measuring height. The, this gentleman in particular also said, I don't want to put it at the ground. I want to raise it up an inch so I can weed whack and it doesn't get dirty and cool. That's what most people are doing. So, but then again, his fence became six foot three instead of six feet. Technically, I can't put my signature on it. And you go from the ground to the tallest part. Yes. Uh, okay. So this is just to try to clean up a common sense. I think it's common sense. I'll leave it to you to disagree with me. I like it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, um, well, specifically in LS uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, is there any way to say that the fence has to be so you can see through it so it can't block the view of the lake? I mean, and that's just a thought, you know, but again, getting back to people. I mean, I just have seen communities, not in Vermont, but you can't see any of the water. You know, you drive for miles and there's just fences. Yeah, um, if that's something you want to explore, I would say either you'll have to give me some time or include it in your next supplement. Um, I think it would be more complicated than you think mm -hmm. in how we write it. A lot of people put fences up for privacy. If you can see through yeah. it, you need privacy. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know how that would yeah. apply. It's not impossible to write. But it's trickier than you think because you have to talk about where the fence is, front yard, side yard. Is it? It's just. It would take a little bit. So just in terms, I mean, yeah. Any Not it's, it wouldn't be a quick just fix. Just in terms of again trying to preserve views for people. I don't know if it would just be in LS three, you know, right. along East Glacier Drive that we would do that. But again, just. I, I have seen, you know, miles and miles of fences where people can't see the ocean, they can't see the water. You know, they're denied access kind of to the view. So it's always a balancing act. So I could save it as a discussion point for the next supplement. I would say if you were to take it up as part of this supplement, remember every week and every day that you delay actually yes. adopting this. I get the application in for the three parking spaces and the 40-foot building. I have an application in right now for a 40-foot rebuild. It's in. I get it. And there will, so we might have to just have good enough for now. Mm -hmm. If we'll yeah. <laughs> so let's come back to that. This one I just, I was, it was quick. I didn't think it was a big deal. Are you guys okay with this one? Okay. That's me. So it does give them a little space off the ground and a little space for caps. Okay. Good. See, I told you. Some of these are quick. Um, Non-conforming uses. This is policy. Uh, let me get to the page. Page 18. Bob, you're good. Yep. Yeah. So right now, um, says if you discontinue a use for six months, it's done, kaput. This says you might be able to extend to 12 um, if it's actively marketed and stuff. I think COVID has changed a lot of thinking. The real estate market is wacky, especially for non-residential uses. I don't pretend that this is an easy one or that I it's a no-brainer. This is policy. I don't take any offense if you think six months is plenty. Um, so again, if you have a use right now that's non-conforming, I'm gonna just raise the um, Porter's Point store. I don't, is there a name? I don't know. The store on Porter's Point Road. 
is a non-conforming use prints or yeah. you know, whatever it's the apple deli yeah whatever it was six months after that stops it can't be a store ever again it is a residential neighborhood a residential house six months when you're trying to market something like that right now is very challenging this would allow them up to 12 months if they're actively marketing and it's not just a blighted vacant site again makes sense i appreciate that this is a policy change and i don't pretend that this is how long has that store been vacant just out of curiosity would this apply to them um, so they have demonstrated use periodically it would apply to them they are not considered they've not exceeded their six months they are currently allowed their shop use that's what I can tell you to keep within the but they have frame. within every six months had to do something to demonstrate its use would this preclude somebody who is, has something on the fence they're not sure about? So once a month they rent it out to somebody as a business and have a business in for a month and can do this month after month after month after month or is every six month policy to continue this forever? So they can already do that. So then if they can already do that, why do we have to expand it to a year? Why not? They've got six months, put something in there for a month if you need to, to continue. I think it's for the people who aren't trying to skirt it, who are actively trying to market something. Yeah, if you are, if you honestly want to get rid of your thing, your property, you walk away, and it takes you a year to get rid of it. You don't want to play I'm any games. I'm not attached to this, just to yeah. be clear. I'm just asking, throwing yeah. things out there, yeah. because if you leave somebody a loophole, sometimes it gets taken advantage of. Absolutely. Yeah, and I agree. And that's what's going on to get through the six months. So if we go to 12, gives them some leeway without having to play games. I hope. And it's perfectly okay as the decision-making body to not be okay with this one. <laughs> so is COVID the reason why uh, six months is not enough time now, or is it is that like in any world it's, it would be 12 months? It's partial. Months? I think it's, a, it's about the not, residential right now, right, is booming. Everything else is not. Um, and so it's just, it's the market. Um, from what I understand, I'm not a realtor. Um, I don't think 12 months is more fair to a business owner. I think if it's not abandoned, okay. that's, you don't want something to sit abandoned and hold on to that use forever. Um, do I feel strongly about it? Absolutely not. It's, it's something that was that's been talked about on more than one property. Um, and it's been in draft form since even before I got here. So I wanted to include it. But if you say, we just don't know, or save it for later, or no. We will not. So what happens, Can we leave? What happens after 12 months and the building sits there? They can't market it as a commercial piece of property anymore. It's still, what happens? It just still sits there? Yeah. So they the would extra just six months gives them a little bit more time to market it and sell the property and get it being used again. That's basically what we're trying to do. Yes. We don't see a ton of it. I mean, most stuff is conforming. In use and again, this is only use, not a, not the dimensional structure of conformity. No, I'm just trying to think. If it's non-conforming use, it doesn't sell within 12 months. It's going to sit there, falling apart until someone can market it as a piece of property that can be made into residential. Yeah, in this example, I think it was also a concern. From what I understand, for West Lakeshore, there are some uses that some people had said, boy, this is not really kind of what we want new stuff being built as. But we're okay with the, you know, Bob's Repair Shop. I don't know if that even exists. We don't want a new repair shop or a new gas station, but we're totally cool with the one that's there. If that were to stop, it could not be reborn. 
Yeah, and there's some old school properties that would be shamed a little. Clover House is already gone. That, okay. The Clover House, that must be already gone. Oh, was that a non-conforming? It was. That's got, that must be way down now. So the place that used to be a florist shop on West Lake Shore Drive, that could never be a florist, could never be a business again? Or that's a commercial. Well, right? Yeah, that's an okay. LS, yeah. too. Okay. So she, that, that property's okay. Yeah. Clover House was sitting there. This is just there. residential. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, so this is anything where that use is no longer allowed. Yeah. It could be the opposite. It could be a residential and a commercial zone. Yes, yeah. the same. Yeah. yeah. And a few of those exist, I think. Yeah. 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 I don't know, this season times like 12 months goes by really quickly. Mm -hmm. Right. Trying to sell commercial property, right? you know. Yeah. Six months is just, sometimes it's barely enough time to get a for sale sign out. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'll roll with the flow. I'm easy. There you go. He's easy. <laughs> so you're all good. Unanimously okay there. Yep. Okay. Um. My reading glasses. Tiny little print. Um. Uh, H is extremely simple. Two point fifteen. Bob, do you have the page? <laughs> well, I didn't get the H yet, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, 21 it starts on if you're talking about the foot of a water supply. Mm -hmm. Which going to change. Yeah, so this is just, again, I sat down with our wastewater official and we realized mm -hmm. just how few tie-ins there are with the expectations for wastewater. So this is really just trying to clean that all up, straighten that up, tie in what is expected for wastewater into the development regulations. The problem is if they exist only in the ordinances, only the wastewater official can require them. So if it says, for example, you need a permit to get a septic tank, great. You need a permit from the wastewater official to get a septic tank. You don't put it in here. We can't require that you have that permit to build a new house. So this is just trying to connect those activities that take place either through DRB or other permitting to some common sense wastewater permitting needs. And that's what is H there. It's just connecting it to chapter eight. There was no connection to chapter eight previously. Chapter eight is the chapter of the code of ordinances that talks about septic. Um, there's nothing here that is substantively different than is required in Chapter 8. We're just linking it to these requirements. So if someone, a family, sells their home to a family member, transfers that property, do they still have to go through this? Do the, does their septic, see, I would like to figure out a way if that septic, before it got transferred, would have to be inspected. That is a state wastewater regulation that I'm not touching. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's a rough respectfully. one. Respectfully. <laughs> um, so we follow, so we have delegation here, but we follow the state wastewater rules. Yeah. So they determine them. Again, what this is, is just putting what's already existing in yeah. clear language. I just tried to pass legislation for that. I thought I'd give it a shot. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it didn't go ahead at the state level. Um, <laughs> I update reference to building code. Um, we called it the building and the building code. It has a new name. It's um, now the building code and building safety ordinance. That's page 23. Nothing earth shattering, but I'm trying to be thorough and listing everything that's been changed. Um, another not earth shattering one. Um, Jay, there was a discrepancy <coughs> in chapter four. Sorry. I have to scroll here. Let me get to chapter four.
So the heading of chapter four. Sorry. Heading of chapter four went GD1, GD2, GD3, GD4. That's great. Then you get into the text, it goes GD1, GD2, severance corners. So it's just Kimba. GD3 is the severance corners form based code district. So it's just, just clarity. Nothing substantive. Okay. Um, just listing it here to be thorough. Um, K704C. Ooh, we get to really scroll. Hang on. your page in a moment. Are you on K? Mm -hmm. Yes. You Looks got it like for me? 30. Page 30. Oops. Too far. Talking about signs? No. Water okay. Protection District. 704C. Oh, here we go. Page 7. Article 7, page 7. Article 7. Article yes. Seven. Wow. So this again just pulling things in line, having sat down with our wastewater and stormwater experts. This is just stuff that they've been looking for for a while. Um, says that, you know, so state stormwater rules allow for exemption of stormwater management systems within a stream buffer. Now it's clear. Nothing substantive. Thumbs up. Okay. Uh, vehicle charging stations. Whew, okay. Substance. Uh, that is 10.01. This is the first of three that were remanded from Supplement 43. When you get to it, can you blow it up? Because I, I can't read it that small. Yeah, nope. it just scrolls faster when it's small. Change which made it yeah, harder. It does. It does. <laughs> That's me off too. Okay. <laughs> I'll fix that. Article 10, page 4. Okay. Substance, substance, substance. Okay. So there's a few things. This one is a little bit different in terms of how it is shown here because I wanted to show you a markup of the current regulations and a markup of your previous markup. So, <laughs> um, history you guys know better than I do. From what I understand, there was language that the Planning Commission included for electric vehicle charging as part of the last supplement. That went to the select board who said, why is this here? Nobody quite knew. And so the select board says, we're gonna kick it out of this supplement. You guys talk about it. Am I, am I doing okay, Pam? <laughs> you guys talk about it, figure out if you really want it there and bring it back to us. So, electric vehicle charging stations. I think part of the reason that it also got kicked out was Act 250. So, typical residential building standards, energy standards do not include stipulations for electric vehicle charging. However, if you are subject to Act 250, you are subject to the stretch code 
which has a requirement for electric vehicle charging stations. So originally I said, well, fine, Act 250 is going to take care of this for the same thresholds that was included. It doesn't need to be in here. And then I realized that Severance Corners is part of the growth center, which is exempt from Act 250 review. So if you want this in there, in most places, it'll be governed by Act 250 standards for any property that's subject to it, except in your growth center, which is probably the one place, if you're gonna have it anywhere, probably the place you want it. So, back to the red line, red line. Your full draft is the 789. That was the draft as part of Supplement 43 that you sent to the commission. What I am recommending here to bring it more in line with the stretch code and to simplify it is to still require the charging stations for residential properties of 10 units or more, one per 4% of spaces. The piece about having them convenient to the main entrance, I removed. I can tell you, as somebody who drives one, just to be clear, you don't want them in the most convenient spaces. Um, and most places don't want to wire them in the most convenient <coughs> places um, because they will be parked in by other vehicles. They will not be reserved. If you put them in the prime spot, you'll almost always find <laughs> A Toyota Tacoma parked in one. I have one of those too, so I'm not picking on most people. Um, so that is a professional recommendation to remove the location element if you do want to include them. I would not force them to be in those prime spots. Um, they could still be there if somebody wants to put them there, but I would not force them to be there. Um, this, I also deleted this language of only electric vehicles may occupy charging spaces. That's an enforcement issue. It's a weird thing to put in a regulation. It's not a design site plan element. I much prefer it the way it's written now than previous. So residential only. Severance Corners, then, because it's not just residential, there are also commercial buildings in there. You yes. Said commercial buildings do not have to provide. Yeah, it's a good question. So it's still, I guess you could say multifamily or mixed projects with 10 units of residential or more. I think that the idea, and if you read a lot of studies, I do read a lot of these studies, I, I sort of keep up on these. Um, most people with you you include multifamily because these are the people of the hardest they're not having garages they're not having a private space most vehicle charging is done overnight especially if you have just a level two charger um, or even level one um, most people are not at businesses long enough to successfully get a charge again i drive one I don't plug in at Hannaford. It's not worth it to me. Um, I don't plug in here either. Um, and most charging is done per the studies at, at, at a place that you live. Um, again, I'm not tied to this. If you'd like to, to bring it back, I'm just making a, a recommendation that falls in line with the stretch code. The stretch code speaks only to the residential component. Yeah. The uh, section A dash four multifamily developments, ten units or more. They don't include commercial. There's no charging stations at commercial. Not that there isn't, it's just not required as part of this particular code. You're welcome to require anything you'd like. 
I was just trying to be consistent. I'm just curious, who pays, I was, when I was reading this, I, and I should know this, but who pays for the electricity? Um, I've seen different models. Some places will offer free charging and some places will require you to use a system like PlugShare um, or uh, there's a couple different systems. So you're either charged or you have to pay. Or Tesla has its own. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, free ones are harder and harder to find. Mm -hmm. Most places you have to pay. Yeah, the only free one that I know about is in St. Albans parking garage. You have to pay with the parking spot. Oh. City Markets was free for a long time. Is it not free anymore? I don't know. No. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Let me put that out there. City Markets free. <laughs> the only reason work. I'd like commercial is because I'd like people to spend more time in stores, you know, and spend money in Colchester. Yeah. I don't know if that equates to that, but that's why I would like it around restaurants or you know, places where people could go shopping so that they, you know, they would, while they're waiting to charge, they're, they're not just sitting in their car. Yeah. Well, this mandates level two charging, which is not the slowest, but it's not quick. Mm -hmm. um, you probably are only making up on a standard level two charger in an hour of shopping, 10 to 15 miles. Mm -hmm of charge. Um, I do it anyway if I'm at City Market because it's free. <laughs> but and that's well, not you pay for it there somewhere, you just don't see it. <laughs> that's true. I do I do pay for it somewhere. But so do you. <laughs> um, will those chargers the those... fast chargers are a different ball game. Um, and most of those are Tesla chargers, but because you can sit for twenty minutes at a you know at a rest stop, get a coffee chill out and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. You know, you've just about replenished most of what you need. Those are pretty rare and that's not what's specified here. I shouldn't say they're rare. Um, they don't fit most electric vehicles. So in the future, let's say 10, 20 years in the future, would they have to be replaced, the chargers, or could they, does anybody know if they could just be upgraded? to be a fast charger, is it something? They probably would have to be replaced. It's a different technology, it's a different plug. I think we digress. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, think I think we digress. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, I'm just trying to think about a little ahead, you know, I mean, so we don't have to, if they could just be upgraded, it might be worth it. I someday you may have it in the road, so when you're driving down, it charges as you go. Can you see that in Sweden? That's Prius, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's Prius. That's Prius does, right? Well, so my goal sweet. here is to give you something back that was more than a baby step. <coughs> Thoughts? Thoughts, thoughts on that one? <laughs> thoughts on that one? I don't have a lot of thoughts on that one myself. So. I Keep it, care less. change it, delete I it. I think myself, I'm, I'm of a different thought that if you're going to build this, these big apartment buildings, the customer base is gonna drive these guys to put some chargers out there somewhere. <clears throat> if you have a commercial base, Tesla's gonna come in and rent a little piece of property and throw some down, so this is fine with me. Throw them somewhere from the residentials, let them roll. All right, I heard That's from Rich, anyone else? Go ahead. In the spirit of, let's get moving. <laughs> yeah. Not try to pressure you, but yes, keep it as, as red line, adjusted. red line. Yeah. As okay. it's been adjusted. Red line squared. Yes. All good for the select boards. So we don't have to hear about it again. Yeah, they'll tell you. I, I didn't care about as much then either yeah, as I do they? now. Hands at least heard my spiel. <laughs> good. All right. <laughs> may they may change it all completely, but at least. Okay. Onward. Uh, onward. Um, uh, oh, this is another common sense uh, extension. Um, M, 9.04H. Oh, sorry, I got out of order there. Slap my hand. 9.04H. So this says,
dream of a time when our regulations, you can just go to the table of contents and click on them. I'm working on it. Nine oh four H. Nope, that's not nine oh four. Expiration. Yes. So this says your major subdivision elements expire after a year. Anybody who's ever seen a major subdivision be built knows it doesn't doesn't happen in a year. No. Um, Imagine that. So. Years. This is to extend that 9.04H. Oh, there it is. So, change it from one year to three is my recommendation. I think it's a very common sense approach. Your deck permit doesn't expire as fast as your whole subdivision permit. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. <laughs> um, I don't have any problems with that. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah, I just think it's reasonable. Somebody's building out a 10 lot subdivision in under a year. We're all good. Next. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't, it's, it's got a mind of its own. Hopefully they'll all fix themselves once. I will check them as I accept all the changes eventually. Um, bicycle parking. Another remand. 10.01k. <laughs> I think it's page nine or the bottom of eight. Bike racks shall be clearly visible to employees and visitors where practical and safe. They should be located in proximity to the main entrance of the building. Okay, so. Page. Almost there? Nine. Nine. So this one I think was also remanded because they're like, what is the point? Um, so sorry, this is not a red line or a red line. There was a lot more to this um, about having a plug in space for the bike racks as well and having it. Um, <clears throat> there, there was more language. I've slimmed that down. I think that what some of the feedback was is that having a plug-in for your bike racks was just unreasonable. It just seemed like a lot. Why? I'm um, just curious. I don't, I don't know. I wasn't there as part of the... So there's not going to be any charging for bikes? Not required. I got you on that I, one. I think it should be required. I mean, I'm just. I got. Just, I, do, I have to admit on that one, which is crazy to me, is the whole world has changed with e-bikes. They're everywhere, so, and now we're gonna have people to drag them up their stairs and stick them in and plug them in. But we're gonna let them out their car. We're gonna force to put plugs, and it's a little goofy. Which I'm good with the rack. Thing. The truth. I don't care. They have to drag them up the stairs. The guy with so the I was just trying gonna... to. I, I understood. That <laughs> I, get I wasn't it. here. Yeah, I get it. That this was not one that the select board was willing to move forward one, but yeah. wanted something. Yeah. Um. Well, this is for parking areas, not just residential. It's right. Like commercial. All parking areas. All parking areas. So it's really when you're out there and about. It's not. Right. Yeah, so I'm going to probably hit you guys in a future. This is a very short bike parking section. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of big ideas that I didn't want to hit you with here, but that I think will be well appreciated. I'd like to return to this one in a future supplement. I sure. think there's some good stuff being done with bike parking. I think Colchester's behind on it. Um, oh, it's moving fast. It was just more than yeah, I think we could fast. put in here. Yeah. <laughs> But I'd like to. I get more people. I have it practically written. Right. I'm okay. But I don't want to hit you with it here. Does it include charging? The next supplement. Part of it, and also part of it, talks about what bike parking is. Mm -hmm. A big part, if you've ever tried to park your bike anywhere, is it says you have to have a rack. Have you ever tried to park your bike in one of those wave racks? 
You might as well not have one. Right. You'll, you'll go places and people have them tied to lampposts because lampposts are better than a lot of the racks. So just parking is also problematic because we don't define what parking is. Yeah. And people buy the cheapest racks, especially movable racks that are there on day one and don't exist after day three. <laughs> right? So there's a lot of problems with bike parking yeah. that we can fix that are cheap and easy for developers, but that make the world of difference. One simple thing up in St. Albans, we moved it so it could be visible. And visible. People started using it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's amazing simple. if it's not in the back door where the kitchen staff hang out on their lunch breaks. Yeah. Well, we moved it just 10 feet <laughs> out of the shrubs. And, <laughs> and I bolted. That. Hopefully like bolted. Your ideas on bike racks. So I have a lot of things. I think for now, this is still something, but I fully acknowledge we could do more. Right. Okay. Does this yep. good enough for now? Uh, yep. Yeah? Yep. Okay to bring it back in the next supplement? Sure. Okay. Good. <laughs> I got ideas. Uh, commercial vehicle definitions. Another one that was remanded. So these, this is the third of those three, 10.01M. Part of what happened here is that it was trying to make a fix for one particular problem and not really considering the bigger part of it. Um, I have since talked to people who know things about commercial vehicles. So this is highlighted because I didn't think it was the right number. Um, length, I'm going to change to 16 feet. I'm gonna do it right now. Oops. Nope. Wrong button. And a height of 10. That, from what I understand, is the standard size of your typical residential plumber. No, right. no CDL, no. We're not talking big box. We're talking, this is the guy who works at an electrical place and takes his truck home at night. I usually have a raised uh, rear end. Yeah. So you can walk into it. That makes sense. But it's not parking a tractor trailer or something that requires a CDL on a residential street. I just wondered if it could be, if possible, if it could be screened from neighboring properties. I, I would I'd be upset if I had to look at that. Like just just Joe the plumber coming home at night? Like this van. Yeah. I mean if possible. I'm not making it a requirement. Well, if you have limits on how high you can have a fence and a truck's ten foot tall, it's kinda of gonna defeat the purpose then. Um, anyone else? Wanna? I get the I get the screening thing, but honestly, I don't want him to go more effort than you have to. If he can park his vehicle in his driveway or next to his house, make use of it every day, I'm I'm okay with it. I've been I've had been in, I lived in Delmi for people that work there, and they're just respectful if they can. They're business people; they don't want to upset their neighbors either. At least the guys I was always dealt with. They'll do their best, and they might even build something on their own without us having to regulate. I can tell you that in, I live in a pretty traditional um, neighborhood. There's at least two people who work for electrical, local electrical companies, two plumbers, one guy who does lawn care. Their vehicles don't look much different to me than the guy with the F-250 next on the other side. Uh, they're smaller than you think, I think. Yeah. This yeah. size. It's smaller than a mobile home. You know, little RVs. Yes. Yeah, right? That's true. Very now, much. How about trailers? And if we're going to talk vehicles, does this also step on the toes of people with trailers? Or does that a different... No. So this is trying to define what a commercial vehicle is. So the other problem is we talk about commercial vehicles a lot, but we don't define them. Um, so that's the other part of this. So then the question come up, well, what about the guy who delivers for Domino's? Is that a commercial vehicle? What about the Uber driver? Is that a commercial vehicle? So this is trying to make clear what is and isn't 
and very clearly saying that the Domino's guy is not a commercial vehicle. It doesn't matter that he uses it for commercial purpose. It's still a resident. It's still a, a passenger vehicle. Um, but if you start to have these 24-foot box trucks that you park at home every night, that starts to be a problem. So you're still allowed to have one. This was about more than one commercial vehicle. Again, I wasn't here for that original discussion, but I understand that a big part of it was what is a commercial vehicle and what's the right size when we're talking about it. I thought they were only allowed to have one. Yes. They can only have one. Yes. Oh, okay. So you said they could have more than one. No. Okay. But this is also what is a commercial vehicle, what is to make clear what you can and can't have. So can I have a 16 foot truck in a 30 foot trailer? Um, it's a combination, so no. Just curious because. Now again, this is something that is sort of a commercial vehicle, so. I don't think that, I don't know that you're hitting 16 feet on a, on a standard passenger truck, are you? Like a... Um, oh, yeah. A regular, regular pickup truck? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, my pickup truck 16 feet. It's probably 18. But you're still taking, basically, it's a pickup, it's a cabin chassis that uh, but working guys can But nobody's that that's a commercial vehicle, so... Yeah. I think we're okay. Yeah. This actually, I think, was really only a problem in one particular case. I don't think that it had a lot of drive outside of that request, which so I understand sort of fixed itself. Right. Where did you find the, where you, the definition for 16 feet? Because you're right, pickup trucks are kind of longer. Oh, I didn't. I talked to somebody who owns a lot of trucks. Yeah, <laughs> the, the 16 foot would cover a, a base truck. Which is 16 to 18, actually. To you think it should be? How big are the egg trucks? Uh, yeah, Those go a lot better. Just, I just 20s. All the ones I've seen for construction. Um, I can't whether it's like a large size link or pickup truck. Yeah. Yeah, There's, I don't pretend to be an expert, so I talk to other people. Yeah. <laughs> 16 yeah, will cover yeah. almost everybody. Okay. 18 feet might be a better one. Because I, I know they, 18 feet is a standard parking spot. You see these vehicles parking those spots, they're usually just a little bit beyond it. <laughs> yeah, and you don't. Yeah, you don't want like that U-Haul truck, right? Yeah. Like sure. this is about Joe the plumber, Maria the electrician, right? Like being able to bring their vehicle home at night, yeah. and not have that cow as a commercial vehicle. Yeah. I did that. So, do you want to go to 18 feet? It's no big deal. A couple more feet gives you the guy with a four-door. If it's an standard parking spot. That's a good reference point. Yep. Okay. We good with vehicles? Yep. Yeah, it's crossed out. I know it's hard to tell. I'm going to format these later. I don't know. It's like a... Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I do see it. It is crossed out, but I'll clean it up. Um, photovoltaic systems. Um, this is very simple. There's nothing substantive. What it's trying to do, this is 10.08. Page 27. I think, wow. Page 27. Yep. On the bottom of it. Page 17. What this is just trying to do is clarify. State law says if you're connected to the grid, we can't regulate you. So we had all these standards in here, but it wasn't clear what it was talking about actually regulating. What was the page called? 27. 27. Thank you. It's also clarifying language. It formally said solar collectors for consistency and with state statute and chapter four. Change it to photovoltaic systems. 
this is making clear that even if you are connected to the grid, the town has the ability to regulate roof mounted systems with respect to fire access. So just making those clarifications. We do them all the time. They're super easy. Um, and then this makes clear that these requirements only apply to those that are not net metered or connected. Because um, it wasn't clear and people were like, why do I, you know, you're not allowed to do this. And they're right, we're not. If you don't connect though, we have all the rights in the world. Um, I did change it. I knew it's, it's had 10 feet in height for a solar panel. That seemed really short when you can have a shed that's 40. I'm recommending 20 feet. Like, you'll almost never see these. Everybody connects. But if you don't connect, you can have a 20 foot panel instead of 10. Yes? Okay. Wind turbines. Um, had some weird language. Sorry. So, so why is it you want to regulate the non-metered systems more than the metered ones. What's the, what's the rationale for that? Well, it's not about wanting, it's about state statute. State statute says you cannot regulate not metered. Why do you want to regulate non-metered systems? Presumably so that you have some boundaries in place. I didn't create it, it was in there. <laughs> I'm just trying to make it taller. I just, I don't like stuff that restricts people using renewable energy. All right, this, this will give them more. This will add to it. This will make it easier for them. I think the 10 feet is restricting. Yeah. Yeah, we agree. So the language is not new. The language was already in there. I was just trying to make it simpler. So it's less restrictive. Less restrictive. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting, I know it's getting late. It's, not, it's getting late. That's OK. At some point, maybe you remove it all together, but I'm not trying to reinvent yeah. solar wheels yeah. tonight. <laughs> um, what do we have to do? Wind turbines. Um, yeah. Wind turbines? Where's that? Oh, there. Yeah, so this was weird. It said setbacks can be reduced if the property owner says yes, the adjacent property owner. You never want a standard in your regulations that relies on neighbor approval. You need to be clear and unambiguous, so I've deleted that. Um, we say that you have to have a fence. We don't say how high the fence is. If you have to have a four-foot fence around a pool, you're already saying you have to have a fence around a wind turbine. Let's give it a height. I put four feet. Yep. Okay. Again, I'm not trying to make up whether it should have a fence. You already had that in there. I left it. Yep. Okay. Um, nothing else there. Those are pretty straightforward. Uh, water and wastewater. I think S and T you can just combine. It's really just, again, clarifying the connections to state wastewater regulations. There's nothing substantive. Page two. Yeah, so. This is the connection to chapter eight and saying that the wastewater official might say that the project is exempt from permitting. Pretty straightforward. Uh, 1105, same thing. It's what do we need to know to issue a certificate of occupancy. Previously, we didn't have language that said that you had to have any sort of wastewater system built. Now this says more about what's required for a certificate of occupancy. We do an inspection right now. We had almost no standards. These are the same standards we're currently using. You have to meet what your approval says. Not groundbreaking, a little bit obvious, but it was missing. Uh, design certifications, you had no requirement for them before for wastewater, now you do. Anything? No? Okay. Um, that wasn't on our list. 
I think that was T, 1105. Yeah. 1104. Oh, the number was wrong. Thank you. No, but you have something under 1105. So. 1105, okay. Let's get it. Expiration. Ah, let me add, I want to add those in. Oh, that should be 1104 and 05. Uh, Same idea of expirations. Uh, extend from 12 to 18 months. A little bit more time for a zoning permit. People pull a permit for a pool. They're back ordered. They can't get them in constructed in 12 months. Your deck. Sometimes longer. Sometimes longer. <laughs> um, and again, this isn't completion. This is until you've reached substantial completion. We didn't define that, so now we've included 50% of the budget's been committed. We had to have something. It's not perfect. But pouring a foundation is not 50% of a new home. But it's very difficult to define what substantial construction is. So you say that build a foundation and slab and they walk away from it for a while after 18 months they have to get a new permit yeah okay but if you build your foundation your slab you frame it you've got you've yeah, committed water. a lot of your budget to it you're good it takes you longer that's fine and it can be extended for another 12 months. well once you reach 50 percent there's no extension necessary so it doesn't expire. Yeah. Um, same thing under there. Okay, definitions. This one I realized definition of in. I realized when I was looking at the uses for LS3 and LS4, I looked at LS1 and LS2. Our definition of an inn previously said up to 60 rooms. So everyone had this idea for West Lakeshore of a cute little inn. <laughs> so you look at the definition and you realize that cute little inn allowed 60 rooms. I don't think. I wasn't here, but I don't think the intention was for a Holiday Inn to exist in there. So I am proposing a change in the definition from 60 rooms, bear with me, I'm on each. To 20. To, did I say 20? I can't remember. Yep. 20. It's a number at the wall if you feel like that's still too much or too little. I looked up the definitions in other areas. I found anywhere from 12 to 30. What's the difference between an inn and a hotel? Or a motel? Well, there wasn't much before this, um, but I think that the hotel has a, a, un, a number associated with it as well. Um, and facilities. Maybe not. I don't know. I may not have looked into that one too much because it wasn't allowed in the lakeshore anyway. Whereas in is. That was the only reason I caught it. This doesn't conflict with Airbnb at all. No. Airbnb couldn't be coming No, and maybe hotel could use an improvement, <clears throat> but at least it's not allowed in the Lakeshore District. Um, but in is? 20 is still a big number, I think. Well, I think what Severance Corner, one of those buildings was originally supposed to be an inn. I don't know why it, I don't think it operates as an inn anymore. Did it get built? I thought it did get built, no, but it just never got operated as an inn. No, those three big... They were dorms at one time, I don't know what they are. Yeah, I think one of them was permitted as a dorm. <coughs> yeah, they ended up never building For the it. pharmacy college. Yeah, yeah. I thought the green building was originally supposed to be an inn. It was. I was part of that deal. They but built it, 
they built a building, but not the inn. Okay. So yeah. what is it? Just it's it was a dorm, and now it's apartments, family. maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah. No, the the inn was actually I think it was like twenty. Mm -hmm. But if it was an inn, it would have been that. Book. It would have been right there, right? That would yeah. Have been... It was a ballroom, and the it was a whole thing about ballroom dancing and. They were going to fill the end. It, it's a thing. It's a huge thing out there. Yeah. So, so you, yeah. they come into the thing and build up this. So this one came up when we were talking about the sewer line. And people were fearful that West Lakeshore would become Lake George. And I was tasked with looking at what could actually be allowed there. You know, we would keep telling people, don't worry, it's not going to be all this stuff. And then you look at the things that were allowed there and you saw in of 60 rooms and we're like oh we've been telling people it's gonna be cute little stuff um and so i think this or some proposal to limit that more is more in line with the intention so in is allowed on ls1 that is the lake side just to be clear i don't think the intention was ever to allow 60 units I think, even, I, I think even 12 is a large number for an inn on, yeah. kind of defeats the purpose of it being an inn. And, yeah. okay. I have three I inns, three 12 inns are, can be pretty large. Yeah. On separate lots? On separate lots, you could. Yeah, so separate ownership. Two rooms, but separate lots. In separate ownership. Mm-hmm. But inns in this, now we're talking about a structure in this particular area. So how do we feel about the size of an in this particular area, right? I, I, I agree 20 might be a bit much. Mm -hmm. Just seemed pretty clear to me that 60 was yeah, we're way not off. what people intended. Yeah, no. no, it isn't. I mean, you want it viable, you know? I mean, imagine if somebody decided to buy the property where the little Lakeshore Pioneer breakfast places right there, and they bang 60 little units in there. Yeah. I think even 20 kind of changes the character of what you're shooting for there, or some of the old yeah. Jake DeForge's property. I did look around at other definitions in other communities around the globe. Um, I didn't specifically look at like you know, like the mountain road in Stowe and looked at small versus small versus larger. I'm just thinking of like what what actually exists as an inn. I could do that. But I was just trying to cut it down from 60. Well, I, I don't know enough about LS1 to you know what else is allowed in there. Is a hotel allowed in LS1? Not in LS1. No, and I think it's a conditional use no more than a certain number in LS2 even. Do you have any idea how many inns with, let's say, 20 rooms could be put into LS1? Not a lot of large properties left, but there are a few. Like, there's a, some rebuilds that could happen. Um, like the Com Cove area is a five acre parcel. Mm -hmm. uh, the Pioneer Deli parcel mm -hmm. is three acres, maybe. Where the um, dentist and hairstylist is right there. I'm not sure how big that is, but that could turn Yeah, I think that's all one lot, right? Yeah. I don't know if it's separate from buildings, separate lots. I wasn't sure. Yeah, I think they're all the same lot, but they're, they're a fair size lot. I think you'd be looking at redevelopment, but. And that's on LS1. Twelve seems small though. Mm -hmm. Twelve seems like a small building in today's world. To make a Let's couple compromise. Bucks. Sixteen. Sixteen? <laughs> sure. <laughs> We're negotiating on a size for somebody. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of what a small hotel would be. Yeah. Yeah. So, since this is not the final, why don't we just leave it at twelve for now? We'll do some research ourselves, and when we come back before we push it as a final, we can say, yeah. "Oh, twelve's not enough," or "Yeah, we're good." So yeah, highlight it, and we'll figure out a number. So I mean, it won't be just LS one. Is that the only? That's not the only place we allow it, right? 
Yeah, let me, um, I'll do more research on it. I just wanted to throw it out. This is one of the first things that I changed like six months ago that I've been sitting on. Um, I think we're in agreement 60. Prior to the sewer vote. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So I, I haven't really returned to it since then, but I could do some more. Yeah, without the sewer, we, nobody's worried about the 60 number because it was never going to happen. Mm -hmm. But now we're in a different world. It was just, it was hard to sit through the select board meetings and talk about what could happen when people were fearful and say, oh yeah, 60 units. Yeah. Oops. Um, okay, so I think what I can do for you there is I'll compare it with a hotel and I'll just try to get you some local quick examples of what does 20 look like versus 12. My guess is I can go to Stowe and figure it out real fast. Online Stowe, not actually drive to Stowe. Yeah. <laughs> But if you want to authorize a field trip, I'm totally, <laughs> totally good with that too. Um, excavation. Uh, I'm not even going to point it out if it's just to exclude work exempt under state permitting. Doesn't count as excavation. Excavation is an important word because it defines what requires a permit. Um, Grammatical, organizational, zoning map. Oh, sorry, I guess I should have talked about that one as part of. So there is a map. It basically shows exactly what you'd expect for LS3 and 4. It's divided by the road. Um, I made no changes to LS1 and 2. Just as a reminder, LS1 and 2 does extend onto East Lakeshore. As we've, um, when, um, Phyllis? Yes. When Phyllis is here, she reminds us of that because she's on East Lakeshore, but she is in LS2. Yeah. Um, but it, it reflects that. It's available here. I, just, I haven't heard anything that... It um, does overlap with the sewer service district, which I think is important when we talk about density. Yeah. So the sewer, the new sewer service district is not just the properties, it's any property with frontage on that road. So the LS4, for example, does extend back if the property has frontage. So if it's a large property, it doesn't cut the property in half, yeah. which is not what happened with West Lakeshore. Larger properties like the Hazlet property are cut. Yeah. LS2 does not extend all of like the Hazlet property, for example, it stops at a at a at a line that's pretty consistent across property boundaries. That's not the case here. Yep. That's it. Very good. <laughs> well, we got to talk timeline. Yeah, we have to talk timeline. Um. So your meetings are. Typically, I'm trying to pull up some form of calendar here. First and third. Yeah. I know we got a little, no, we didn't get off. We're on third. So your next scheduled meeting would be August 2nd. If we do two in August, you're looking at August 2nd and August 16th. 16th. We don't celebrate getting from Bottle Day here, do we? I have historically, which is why I ask. So it's not a holiday. No. Officially. Um, so proceed with August 2nd? Definitely. Do you want a copy that is clean enough to warn for a public hearing, a future public hearing? I would think so, right? We're pretty good. Yes? I think there's a lot. A couple of little things that yeah, you have to just come back. Um, so as a matter of procedure, if you're very close, you could make those amendments, I would suggest making them live, and then you warn that draft for a date certain. Um, but it does, it's going to require, <coughs> going to require a lot of cleanup, which I think I can do. 
I'm on vacation a little bit. <laughs> so why not shoot us an email in a week or so and say, hey, we're going to be able to do it, or nope, we've got to pull the reins mm -hmm. back. Okay. That way there's no pressure on you to get it all jammed in and we'll know what's going on. I'm actually not here on the second. <laughs> <laughs> How about it, yeah, why don't we hold the second but I'll connect with Rich. Um, is there a rush? I mean, is there some, is it, if we don't get it done, is something held up? Um, I think we need to get it done to slow down some redevelopment of places oh, along the lakeshore right. and the permits yeah. that are I getting mean, asked for. The concern is to have something ready to warn, you need to have everything. You need to have the report. There's a full report that has to be written. You have to have all of the other things that are not included here, the cover sheet, the appendices. Um, that's that's going to be a that's going to be tough. Yeah. So the alternative is to pick a date the following week or to look at August 9th and 16th and bang them out 16th now you could have a meeting on the second to finalize things I could have somebody from my staff come Zach is great um, with the idea that we warn on the 16th for a date in September you could still have a meeting Right. But I don't think I'll be able to get you a version ready to warn. Because okay. the day you issue the warning, you have to. Yeah. But we'll have. Yeah. So we'll have a good copy. So we'll have a copy. Have a very good copy. That we can look perfect. at one last run. And Zach will be there to do it. With right. Okay. Change our hotel. Change our hotel. <laughs> Change our hotel or in. Yeah. That's, I'm that, be that works. That night. Yeah. I think I'll actually be out of in. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Figure out how many rooms count I got. How many rooms are there. I will. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'll totally count them. <laughs> yeah, that'll, um, that'll, work. that'll keep us on track. Okay, that so we're going to hold, so you guys are going to hold the 2nd and the 16th. And that second meeting will have only that on it. Yes, and even the second I'm going to keep very light for you. It's just going to be, here yeah. are the things that yeah. are left. It's right. mostly a clean version. Yep. You'll talk about the last bits of things, and then it'll still give us two weeks to get a super clean version ready for. And all the other stuff. Yeah, yep. it's all the other stuff that takes time. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So by the 16th, I'll have a report that has to get submitted. I'll have all of the other attachments and pages that exist in the regulations that you haven't seen because there's no changes to. Okay. A lot of appendices and tables. What date do you think it would be in September? It depends on the newspaper cycle. So you have to have um, 15 days warning, but they don't always publish the day you call them. Sometimes you need like a seven day lead time. So I don't know, but I will come prepared with that date. Because when you warn it, you have to warn it for a date certain. But when you have meetings every two weeks and there's 15 day warning, it might be a month. So it might be the end of September. Yep. Sounds right. We're all good. Yeah. Very good. Thank you guys. Thank you. I'm sorry. It's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not quite, but it's pushing it. Yeah, and we're not done yet. That's but uh, the next two, I promise, will not be long. And then you'll have the public hearing, which might be very long. Yeah, right. This is very good. But August will be light. Yep. Mm -hmm. Staff updates that uh, necessary here? Huh? <laughs> You're good on staff updates? I don't have anything. I might, but I didn't prepare. Yeah, that's fine. That's okay. Minutes of June 1st, we need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.